ESPN College Football presented by McDonald's. The Tigers of Grambling State sitting at an even two and two in the conference, hosting the Braves of Alcorn State. Now, Alcorn State has won the SWAC East division year after year. How about five years in a row? Grambling State, though, trying to gain some footing, make some noise. They can help themselves out if they get a W here today. As we say hello and welcome in with the former Howard University and NFL quarterback Jay Walker, I'm Tiffany Green. It's not how you start, but how you finish. And right now, this is the most critical game for Grambling State and Alcorn State. How's it shake out today, Jay? What a huge contest we have here. Both teams have little to no room for error. For Grambling State University, I think Coach Broderick Fobbs has done his best job of coaching since he's been down here at Grambling, overcoming 11 injuries early in the season to have your team in this position where things were looking so awful. But what have they done? They picked it up on the offensive side of the football, but more importantly, outside of the offensive side of the football, scoring points, they're starting to play that grambling defense. This is a championship caliber defense. Have they turned it around in enough time to save their season? They will certainly be tested today with a signal caller for the Braves and Felix Harper. Felix Harper took the conference by storm. The left-handed gunslinger is a true dual threat quarterback. 20 touchdowns, only two interceptions on the season. He was a backup for the first three weeks of the season. The last five weeks, he's been playing lights out. If he continues to play at this high level for head coach Fred McNair, this all Corn State offense is one of the most balanced in all of FCS football. The question is, can the Braves return to the Celebration Bowl? They've already been there a couple of times, have yet to win it, but they are hungry for that trophy. These teams are two of the Blue Bloods in terms of championships in the conference. However, Grambling, the only team from the SWAC to ever win a Celebration Bowl. Alcorn lost in last year's Celebration Bowl, and all season long, that's been their mantra. Let's get back to Atlanta and take care of some unfinished business against the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. The Tigers won it back in 2016 over North Carolina Central. Fred McNair was in Atlanta last year in his fourth season at the helm. The most underrated coach in the HBCU football today. Fred McNair has done a great job at Alcorn State University. It's time he get his due for the job that he's done. How do you lose going into the season, the offensive player of the year in the conference, and Noah Johnson, a quarterback, lose him to an injury, replace him with Felix Harper, and the beat goes on. Yeah. For Fred McNair, the 2018 SWAC Coach of the Year. On the other side, you have Broderick Fobbs, who's won that and held that title for four seasons throughout his six years here at Grambling State. 81% winning percentage in conference. And when he took over Grambling, the program was in disarray a little bit, but he's come in there, been that steadying force, and you just have to give him credit for that 0-4 start, and now they're playing their best football. And if they can win out, particularly this football game here today, that means that state holiday in Louisiana called the Bayou Classic <laughs> will be for all the marbles. Well, all Corn State won the toss. They elect to receive it. Grambling State kicks it off. Miguel Mendez puts it in the air, and we're underway as Javen Morrison for the fair catch and the touchback. You got to calm me down, too. Okay. Oh, wait this, a minute. This is a swag contest. Game means something. All Corn State travel. Grambling's in the house. Who wants it more? I just can't wait to see how it plays out. Sorry, Tiff. Uh, no, no, no problem at all because the height, we continue to field it, Bill, over weeks after weeks. And Felix Harper is that guy who's gotten better week after week. Yes, yeah, second leading passer in the SWAC, but arguably the offensive player of the year in the SWAC. And you talk about the conference that's got Dewanye Tucker and you got Akil Glass, but this junior from Fairburn, Georgia, has really taken care of business and protected the football. And he hands it off to Deshaun Waller. Whoa. Waller, who was cut down quickly in the backfield. A big loss there, and already we're seeing some great defense there. Devonair Martin was there to get to him quickly. Well, that's how you got to surround the football. It's got to be a team effort. you got to surround it from outside in. And Martin's one of those guys. He's a great, explosive player, but that was a fantastic open field tackle. And so a loss of eight, and it brings up second and long for the Braves. And this is where Harper has to be patient. 
You don't need to pick it all up here. You may just pick up five or six and give your chance a chance on third down. Harper with time. The South Paul throws it, finds his man, Le Charles Pringle, and Pringle is wrapped up by gang tackle from the Tigers. You know, one of the things that I've seen from all Corn State's quarterback is the fact that, you know, he stands in there and he waits and he looks through his progression. Decision making. Watch this. Step up in the pocket. He gets flushed, but he's still looking downfield. He was looking for a place to buy a couple more seconds for the receivers to get open. Finds the open receiver, throws an accurate ball, and now it's third and six. The Braves, 46% on third down efficiency. Man in motion. Harper back to pass. Quickly gets it out, and he finds his man on the outside. And it's Deshaun Waller. So we know what he can do in the backfield, but he can also come out of there and catch a couple passes. Schematically, I love the way they designed this play. Offensive coordinator Elliot Ratton. You know, once you saw the motion go across, it was man to man. Deshaun Waller versus a linebacker. They took their chances with Waller, and he capped the first down. Four wide receivers, three to the bottom of your screen. Harper hands it off to Waller, and Waller, who's so slippery, just tripped up along the outside, and he was brought down by Martin. Martin, who had nine tackles last week for Deshaun Waller. He had 81 yards in their victory over Southern back on October 26 in that 27-13 to 13 decision for the Braves. Waller preseason all-conference running back selection. But they also have a freshman by the name of Nico Duffy, who they're very excited about when he comes into the game. Waller gets the ball again straight ahead, just about a yard or so short of the first down marker. Alcorn State averaging 33 points a game. That's third best in the conference. We talked about the surge that you've seen from Grambling State's offense over the last four games. This Alcorn State offense can do some damage. This one you need to be careful. Third and one to short. Grambling giving them a man-to-man -man look across the board. They're going to sell out for a blitz. If they can pick up this blitz, you can hurt them for a big play. Waller with absolutely nowhere to go, and he's brought down deep in the backfield. Once again, the Grambling State defense was all over it. A loss of six, and that's big number eight, Anthony Mullins. And I don't understand why you didn't check out of this play. This is a sellout blitz. Look at all these folks here. They're not letting anything get outside of them. You see within that tight frame picture there, there's seven guys there with another safety close. You got to check out of that play, go to something else. They were waiting for that call. So Waller and the offense go to the bench. Corey McCullough out to punt it for the Braves. Martin back to receive it. Collects it just near the 23-yard line. Stutter steps, and he's pushed out of bounds. When you look at when these two teams met, you talked about the Blue Bloods of the SWAC. Well, you go back to 2018, and this was a great ball game. Grambling State finds Jeremy Higbottom. He says, I'm just going to call my own number in the third quarter, and I'm going to tie this ball game up. Oh, but wait. He talked about the offensive player of the year in the SWAC last year, Noah Johnson. He did some damage, found Chris Blair at the last second, and Old Corn State walked away with a 33-26 victory. Now, our first look at Hickbottom and the Tigers. Offense quickly out to pass, finds his man, and the receiver brought down just near the first down marker. That's Raylon Richardson, one of his big targets. Jeremy Hickbottom, a guy who has been really good on the ground, but he's really known more so as a passer, Jay. And he's got to be consistent. He has the tools. He can run the football. He can throw the football, but he's been inconsistent, but he's coming off. A great game from a week ago where he had his best outing as a quarterback for Grambling. And everybody says they need a quarterback down here. Well, if Hickbottom can become more consistent, then this is a very good football team. Well, a timeout taken quickly on the field in this first possession for the Tigers by Broderick Fobbs. And, you know, he had a chance to coach a guy like Devontae Kincaid. And Kincaid was one of those guys who was a dynamic quarterback for Grambling State. You know, it's ironic. I talked to Fobbs during the week and I said yes Kincaid was great but he also spoiled you a little bit because be honest the offensive line play wasn't that good and he said we knew the offensive line was bad and so what we've tried to do is make a concerted effort to get better in the trenches up front 
and I asked him who's his best offensive football player, and he told me David Moore, the left guard. Hear what I said. The left guard, the best offensive football player he has. He says he's a 6'3", 200-pound junior. He'll be an NFL prospect, but he makes sure our quarterbacks don't get hit. And any time your coach calls you the best offensive player, your offensive lineman, I'm going to shout you out. Good job, David Moore. <laughs> Second and short and right up the middle is Hickbottom. We talked about Hickbottom and just how well he played last week. Picked up 185 yards on the ground. Also had three rushing scores as well. And he's the team's leading rusher to this point. And I think he called his number a little bit too much. Like on that last play, I thought he should have handed the ball off to Kevin Dominique coming across the formation full speed. Now when you play quarterback in today's college football, it's not just how many carries you have, it's when you make the right decision in the run game. Keelan Elder with the ball up the middle and picks up the first down. Well, Elder, who had 62 yards and a touchdown against Southern, is one of those strong backs, kind of reminds you of Emmitt Smith, says his head coach, Roderick Fobbs. You know, Emmitt Smith, one of the, the greatest ever to do it running in between the tackles. That's what made Emmitt Smith a special running back. He didn't have to bounce outside. He made a living running in between the guards and the tackles. Big bottom rolling out, trying to go to his man, and just overthrows Devontae Davis. And this is the Hickbottom story. College quarterback on this level, you have to make this throw. I mean, this is an open wide receiver. He's going to go inside and flare out number 82. This receiver's open. That ball doesn't have a chance. There's a window to get it in there. He missed. That's why they're talking about the inconsistency. He felt like Kincaid, excuse me, Hickbottom really started out slowly, but he has really started to find his footing over the last few games. As he hands it off to Elder, and Elder is quickly met in the backfield. The defense for the Braves was right there, and Damon Anderson. That's how you sniff out the ball carrier there. You see, Wren came in late, but watch number 42. Shoot the gap, find penetration. I'll meet you in the hole. Oh, yeah, it's not just a hit and let you go. It's a hit, wrap up, pull you from the pile, tackle for a loss behind the line of scrimmage. Good job, number 42, Damian Anderson. Now that brings up third and a dozen. Big bottom with time. Fine span across the middle of Lyndon Rash. Had it touch his hands, could not come up with it. That's a slot receiver that they love to go to. And Jay, could he have got that one? The one hand effort there, but you'd like to see a little bit better throw. Line drive pass, you have to be extremely accurate. This ball has a lot of heat on it. You can arc this ball a little bit. He just decides to zip it in there, go up with two hands. I'm not going to put that on hit bottom. Rash, help out your quarterback. Make that catch. And so the Tigers on fourth and 12 will punt it away. Miguel Menendez does, Menendez, excuse me, does the kicking and punting duties. Nice Sees hit. this one pin the Braves deep into their own territory. It's going to be a long way to work after that 54-yard punt from Mendez. Braves offense coming back in this Slack showdown. ESPN College Football is presented by McDonald's and in part by Allstate. Reminding you that football season is mayhem. Wonderful shots overlooking the beautiful Grambling State University campus here on this wonderful See. afternoon for football. 1901. It's been around for a minute, Jay. I like the history. You go ahead and do your yeah, yeah. history stuff. You know, I always got a problem with the notable alumni who they leave off. So, you know, oh, we'll, we'll, okay. we'll, we'll come back to that after this play, but you can't do that. You can't list two Hall of Famers when they got four. We got to show the love to the Grambling State University, founded in 1901. Terrific College of Education, among many other programs, and deep into his own territory. Felix Harper helping to give the Braves some room. He picks up the first down as he's brought down by Damian Crumity. And once again, it was the decision by Harper. You love his decision. Step back, look. First read's not there. Step up so I can buy some time. Oh, I'll call my own number, pick up the first down. He makes fantastic decisions. Rarely does he make a mistake with the football. Go in motion. 
motion the handoff to Deshaun Waller and Waller up for about two or three yards up ahead. Now, Jay, you were taking issue with that Grambling State school info bio. Why is that? They got four Hall of Famers, well listed too. And Doug Williams, not in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. What about Buck Buchanan? Buck Buchanan. You know, what about Willie, Willie Brown, Davis? Willie Davis, what Charlie Joyner. And then for you, I know you like the arts. I mean, Erica Badu. Badu. <laughs> Badu. <laughs> and then say so you could sing, Michael. Hey, right, look. I, I, hey, why not? You just go for it all. Felix Harper trying to get to Juan Anthony. Anthony came up with the reception. Look, you sing all the time off camera, Jay. I just figure, why, why don't I just try it on camera? You know, see how it works. You got a lot of talents, Tiff. I don't know if that was one of them. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, you talk about it. Your first time here, you know, seeing the game and football atmosphere. What did you think about it? Oh, I love it. Special I place. love it. The, the campus, I mean, uh, the stadium here, it's really sunken down. Uh, you see the homage that they pay to Eddie G. Robinson. And for good reason, Coach Rob was one of the best to ever do it. And now on third and five, the Braves trying to get it done. The reception and completion out to Chris Blair. Chris Blair has been that guy, two-year starter for this Braves group. But we go back to just kind of what we see here in this atmosphere. Everybody's walking around. They're all about the G-men. They hold it down here. You know, and I talk about all Corn State University. Sounds of Dynamite. Love that name. Sounds of Dynamite. McNair, Medgar Evers, Jack Spinks. Two historic schools and outside of Jackson State University, Alcorn's a closer school to Grand. A lot of people think Southern is closer to here than other schools, but no, Alcorn is close to Grambling, about two and a half hours away. Now it takes a ride to get here. Now we're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> too bad you know just going off the interstate you just you know a few miles but that's no problem that look the Braves fans travel they yes, had they no did. problem getting here they always travel though right Jay they, they do they are becoming I'm, I'm, I say this was complimentary they're starting to become the new southern of the SWAC southern always led the SWAC in travel and where they would go with those RVs well Alcorn's starting to travel like southern Harper back to pass finds a man just got behind the defense and for Darius Anderson could not come up with it. Just a little bit out of his reach. Just a little bit. Six foot five inch senior wide receiver. A little contact towards the top of this route. You see there, I thought that could have been a hole that clearly disrupted this pass. And Anderson tried to lay out for it, but I'm more concerned that they didn't call that holding penalty. I saw that when the ball was in the air. Grambling got away with one. Anderson not able to hold on to the football. 13 yards to gain in order to move the chains for Alcorn State. See Grambling five across. They're going to keep everything in front of them. Defensive secondary all lined up at the first down marker. Harper feeling the pressure. Gets it out to Nico Duffy. Duffy, the true freshman out of Tampa, Florida, still down behind the sticks. And that'll bring up fourth down. So that Grambling State defense says, okay, Alcorn State, you're pretty good, but we are too. They've done a really good job at pressuring Harper a little bit. That's how you play that third and long defense. Force the quarterback, get rid of the ball quickly, come up, make a sound tackle. It was good pressure by number 98, Cody Dillard. McCullough on to punt once more for the Braves. High sky kick. Martin collects it. We thought this would be a defensive battle so far. That's how it shaped out to be in the first quarter. Well, Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern, we'll have more college football coming your way as the next college football playoff top 25 rankings will be revealed recently. The guys will break them down from top to bottom. They also have the committee chair as well. They got some explaining to do. Uh oh. <laughs> Wait a minute. We both missed. You, I mean, yeah, we have Clemson. Yeah, top you, four. Yeah. Oh. I had Ohio State though. Did yeah. you have Ohio State? I had Bama. Okay. Yeah, I had Bama. Yeah, but neither one of us had Clemson on the outside no. looking in right no. now. No. Big bottom with plenty of time finds 
Darquez Brutton, and Brutton picks up about a few yards, four to be exact. And I like that play selection by Mark Orlando. This Alcorn defense, which is physical with their defensive line and extremely fast at the linebacker position with Muhammad and Anderson and Heron, you have to get them going different directions. You can't run straight at them. So you're trying to do this right now, run straight at them, they're going to beat you every time. But if you give them some misdirection, get, use that speed against them, you can hurt them for some pretty big plays. You know, Coach, or, uh, excuse me, Coach Bob's, you know, told us earlier in the week that you know they started out running the football, and that was their bread and butter. They did it really well, but teams as of late have dared them to throw the football, but they also have seen success there in the last few weeks. Big bottom with Wren in his face, throws it up. Had a couple of Tigers receivers over there, but it's tipped out of bounds, brings up fourth and five. This is just lazy route running. That's some of the laziest routes I've seen. Everybody's going five yards and curling. Get open. None of them are selling. Right there, possibly you could have got it to them there, but I looked around, and I didn't really see anybody open. And you can blame the quarterback all you want, but at the end of the day, throwing the football all starts with wide receivers that can get open and have a sense of urgency. So thus far, neither offense has really been able to move the football well. The defensive struggle. Braves almost got to it. And Charles Pringle collects it and has nowhere to go. Quickly met by a couple of black jerseys. So a short return for the Braves. They'll get started inside their 30 when we come back. Free shipping on millions of items at Amazon. Well, Fred McNair, since taking over the Alcorn State football program, you see what he's done year by year. He's increased his wins by two from 16 to 17 to 18 and winning SWAC East Division titles, including last year's SWAC championship as well. He's done a tremendous job down there in Lorman, as you mentioned, Jay. And replacing Jay Hobson, who kind of put him back on the map. Hobson went to Southern Miss. Everybody thought the program would fall. That's not been the case. Also, not the case for either team to be able to run the football as of yet. Nico Duffy was tracked down in the backfield by DeAndre McCarthy. Grambling State has plenty of speed as well. They're playing assignment football, and we've seen their linebackers have the ability to shoot the gap. McCarthy playing that inside linebacker position was a former walk-on started off his career division two linebacker and he replaced Darius Christmas who was SWAT defensive player of the year and they say McCarthy's a good one Harper with time finds the man and that's Anthony Anthony was just streaking across to the middle of the field yeah, when you play zone coverage you have to reroute the wide receiver in that case there Damian Crump Cremonti wasn't able to get the receiver off his seam route. They were able to stick it. And they go quick tempo offense once more to Anthony. Anthody tripped up as he saw a defender coming flying in his face. So let me show you what a reroute is. You're going to see the receiver right here. This is number four, defensive back. All he's going to do is run on that seam. The closer he sticks to the seam, that means the more chance you have at a completion. you got to really get him off that seam. He runs right down the hash mark. That's stealing. you got to reroute that wide receiver. In that case there, the secondary of Grambling State let them down not doing their assignment. Tip, I think you could have made that pass. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's just right down the seam. You hey. don't have to move them. <laughs> you're going to let them run right to where we drew up the play. <laughs> We're going to hurt you. Yeah, former flag football quarterback. I was on it. I would have been on it, Jay. Got not as again. crisp as you, as Felix Harper has plenty of real estate up ahead across the 45-yard line into Tiger territory. Well, Felix Harper on that 14-yard run, and he made that look easy. Uh, just makes a quick decision. I thought there was a wide receiver that was open, but if you're going to make a decision, live with it, get in and out quickly, picks up the first down. Again, they hurry quickly to the line after their fifth first down of the ball game. Under two minutes to go here in the opening frame from Grambling. The handoff. And Nico Duffy picks up just about four or five brought down by Jeremy Carter. We talked about Duffy, the speedster out of Tampa, Florida. And we've seen him have some highlight runs 
and we've covered all corn before. He's your guy that's that home run hitter with that speed. He was a state qualifier in the long jump, big track. He was also a hurdler as well. Three-star recruit out of Jefferson High School, home of the Dragons. Harper gets it away, and he has a man, and what a catch by Radarius Anderson. Anderson, who can climb the ladder, go get it, and he brought it in. Yeah, but that should have been a pick. That ball was in the air. You're going to see two black jerseys come over and knock each other out of the way. I think it's Joseph McWilliams, number 29. He's in good position, doesn't time up his jump, and allows the big play to Radarius Anthony. That, that's just what you that ball kind of up for grabs, but when you have confidence in your receiver, particularly when your receiver is six foot five, throw it up high and see if he can make a play for you. Well, the coaches say that Anderson has good hands and he was able to have it stick to his hands and bring it in. And that was a huge play as now the Braves are in the red zone after that 29 yard reception. And this is the best drive we've seen from either offense today, Jay. It's been a defensive battle right there. In in a game like this, when both defenses are pretty evenly matched, you're going to need some great individual plays. It's going to be hard to have long drives down the field. You're going to need some missed tackles and some explosive plays to help get the ball down the field. And there it's Anthony just came up with a huge catch for the Braves. Well, Felix Harper, you see where he ranks among all FCS programs, 15th in both passing TDs and completion percentage and points per game coming in at fourth. The 20. Now Harper trying to put some points on the board for his team. Finds Anderson again. And just near the four-yard line brought down by McCarthy. Well, Anderson is one of those guys, though, Jay, who's been dinged up. They're happy that he's back healthy again. And you can see the difference he makes in this offense. His whole career. They've been waiting for him. He's He's been anointed that, that guy with that type of talent, six feet, five inches tall, 198 pounds. He has the size, but as you mentioned, he's been dinged up. And now his senior season, we're starting to see some of that brilliance that we're excited about. Bootleg, and Harper had Blair in the back of the end zone, but just overthrew him. Do anything but that. He could have run the ball and probably scored. He had somebody in the flat he could have thrown it to. You have to do anything but this. Nice fake, gets his head around. Blair is open. You have plenty of time. And he just misfires on a wide open Chris Blair in the back of the end zone. And now this is a big third and three for the Braves. They still can pick up a first down if they get to the one-yard line. Duffy in the backfield, has the ball, moving ahead, no, and he was stopped. McCarthy, once again, from that middle linebacker position, coming in and charging hard. Yeah. And that will take us to the end of our first quarter here from Grambling. Swack matchup between Alcorn State and Grambling State. We're not at zero. We'll see you when we come back. With Prime. Let me tell you, Jay, everybody came ready to play. The football team, the Braves band, but the answer on the other side, the world fame to March and Tiger Man said, wait a minute, are we ready to? It's our house. Oh. Yeah, it's our house. All cool. We know what y'all do. Sounds of dynamite. You know, your image kind of precedes itself. But here, we're the world famed March and Tiger band. They've been going back and forth. Meanwhile, to start the second quarter, Alcorn State is on the field to attempt a 20-yard field goal. Corey McCullough. A little, six little of ten this They're season. going for the field goal. Surprised not going you? for it. Yeah. You're on the road. Conference opportunity to kind of clinch. It's <laughs> up and through. But, Jay, let me challenge that thought because – you want to walk away with points, right? Yes. At the end of the day, yes. you want to get some points. And you saw just how stingy this Grambling State defense has been, especially if you try to run the ball. Yes, and you've always heard me say often in big games, don't be afraid to get the lead. 
right? You want to get the lead first chance you can. However, in this case, I thought you had the ball down there. Your defense is championship quality. Put your big back in the backfield, Deshaun Waller. Your quarterback missed the pass for you. If I'm going on the road, it's a conference game, and I got a lot riding on it, I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive than I need to be and count on my offense to pick up a yard and maybe two yards for the touchdown. But you see that the Braves controlled the ball in that first quarter. Not only that, that was a 10-play drive. It only resulted in three points, but they're now sustaining drives because we saw them try to get going, and they hadn't until that point. And, and, and it goes with that stat you see right there. The ball control to dominate the first quarter like that. And you're up by three? Huh? You, you need to get up by a touchdown at least. So never fault a coach going too conservative. But I just said I was a little bit surprised that Aaron McNair didn't go for the first down and possibly a touchdown. A pooch kick from the Braves and good field position to start for Grambling State. So, Jay, now in this situation, you see three points on the board for the visitors. How does Grambling State respond here to open up the period? Well, they got to figure out a way to get more first downs. And, and hit the, there has to be a sense of urgency from them offensively. We've seen a drop pass. We've seen a couple of poor decisions, a couple of lazy routes. They need to match the intensity of their defensive squad. And I think that Hickbottom, he's got to figure out a way to get going. Now, I don't know if he's the guy that has to make a big run that gets him going, or does he have to get hit? Some quarterbacks got to get knocked around a couple times, and then they start to play. But this offense is predicated on quarterback play. There was a sideline interference called against Alcorn Ooh. State. So now the move ball travels across midfield and even greater starting position now for the Tigers after that penalty. And Jay, I think that stat there only complements what you said about you got to get first downs, you got to get more yards. Only 17 total yards so far for this Tigers offense. And right there, Kevin Dominique had an opportunity to pick up a good chunk there brought down by Kieran Kinsler. Yeah, and great tackle by Kinsler because Dominique saw end zone. You see Kinsler come up number 15 from his safety position, makes that hard tackle on the ankle. Keeping the ball on the ground once more. They feed Dominique again, and he picks up the first down, gain of three. And Grambling taking advantage of it. I'm going to call it the cockiness of Alcorn defensive. Alcorn playing four defensive linemen on the line of scrimmage, and the linebackers and the safeties all five yards deep, challenging them to make blocks up front. Woo! Nice tackle there by Dalen Burks. Burks. Cuts them down. And, and I think, too, Jay, the fact that this game will be decided in the trenches. Absolutely at the line of scrimmage. And watch Burks beat a lazy block by the wide receiver outside, put a good lick on the running back from Graham. The toss out to Dominique. Dominique, who's the big longer back, and he lowered his head. And a big hit and collision there with Kinsler. I need more from the wide receivers. You get outside the pocket, they had a body on a body. Number 10, Lyndon Rash had his guy, but still let him come up make the tackles. No sense of urgency from these wide receivers from Grambling in the blocking game either. Well, you're starting to see the sense of urgency on the ground. Again, Dominique cut down this time by Quinterio Cole, but Dominique, they continue to feed him and keep the ball on the ground. Again, we mentioned that's been the strength of this Tigers offense. Mark Orlando spreading him out to get some exotic run plays in here. This time they switch it up in the backfield. It's Donald Johnson. Johnson with no gain. A penalty marker is on the field. Maybe a chop block, and if so, that'll slow down this drive that had some great momentum for Grambling. Jesse Harris, the official for today. And we'll hear from him now. <laughs> and 
and that's against William Waddell. So, yeah, they call it unsportsmanlike, but they called it. Could it have been a, a, a chop block, Jay? Maybe, I'm not exactly sure either, but 15 yards backs him up, and William Waddell, one of those leaders up front for that offensive line. Pushes him back now. Hickbottom decides to call his own number. Tucks it and run. Gets to the outside just near the 30-yard line. And he's brought down. Now, if you want to run the sense of urgency, the linemen and the running backs, they're getting it done. Take a look at Elder, number 23 in the backfield. His job, go up here, serve as a lead blocker against the SWAC defensive player of the year, Solomon Muhammad. Goes up to him, sizes him up, gives him everything he had. But that little block right there was enough to spring the quarterback on the outside. No third and long for the Tigers. Hick bottom with time and finds this man, and Lyndon Rash holds on to it as he spun down and into the red zone. And that was Solomon Muhammad, who's the guy who delivered that hit. You talked about that preseason SWAC defensive player of the year. He can lay a licking on you. That shows you how good he is, able to drop that deep in coverage, put a hit on a wide receiver in front of him. And with that hit there, they come up three yards short and force a field goal attempt. So a solid drive for the Tigers on this 32-yard field goal attempt. They can tie it up. And it's through the uprights. So the answer from Grambling State on that drive, and we're all tied at three. Thanks, hon. Have fun at work. wants to hoist that trophy once more, but he's got a first deal with Grambling State before he even thinks about that tight at 3 all. Still say that was one of the most exciting environments I've seen in HBCU football in a long time. Great job by the reservation. If they can win this game here today, all signs are pointing to them hosting another SWAT championship there at Alcorn. I'll tell you this about this Alcorn State team. We talked about just how well they travel, they support. They have seen a program continue to breathe life into the Lorman, Mississippi area. But Fred McNair, I, I just like what he's done. You know, he's an Alcorn State guy. His brother, Steve McNair, also attended there as well. And, and just being able to go back home and, and, and lead your your alma mater it's to do easy. something great, it's not an easy task. It's not easy. More times than not, there's more failure than success. And today, talk about Scott Frost at Nebraska, the way they're struggling. Fumble on the, on the field and recovered by Felix Harper. Ball security is going to be of utmost importance here as points will probably be at a premium here today. And this little snap behind him and never really caught it cleanly on that RPO play there. And the Braves fortunate to recover the, ground, the ball on the ground. Loss of four. Brings up second down. Low snap again. Harper handles it. Has a man to the outside. And a lot of contact, but no flag thrown as Chris Blair was the intended target. And as a quarterback, I'm looking for the leadership. I want Harper to go up to Ibrahim, start center, and say, last two snaps have been off the mark. What is going on? And so they're going to make some change. Look at this. They're making some changes on the offensive line for Alcorn. They brought in some substitutes because of that. And that's where you need the leadership to show, hey, you're throwing us off with these snaps. We bring in Joseph Milburn, number 77, to play center to replace Ibrahim. Yeah, they have flip-flopped throughout the season. At 
that center position and Harper unable to hold on to it, but it bounces in his favor. He gets the ball away, but all really negative plays on that drive for the Braves. And now the punting unit will run back onto the field for the Tigers and things are swinging in their favor. He wasn't expecting the ball. That was a quick snap right there. And that's what happens when you substitute centers. Harper was still going through the read of progression of the defense, the ball snaps, and once again, all fortunate to maintain possession of the football. I never know if I've ever said a team is lucky to be able to punt the ball away, because <laughs> that was a horrible three-play drive. We talked about how good this Grambling State defense is. They know how to turn you over in a block punt from the Tigers. Ball still on the ground. I'll tell you this, Najee Gordon went right after it, and the Tigers come up with it. Well, great job by Najee Gordon, number 45. He just wants it, unblocked. How does that happen? Look at this. Watch him just split between the defenders. Two guys blocking one jersey. That's a miscommunication. Grambling State gets the ball again with fantastic field position. And the senior out of New Orleans sets up a great opportunity for the Tigers. Jeremy Hickbottom helped lead the team down the field. Eight plays, seven of them on the ground resulted in a field goal. And now they can tack on more. Big bottom, taking his time, didn't know where to go. And finally, he's brought he down. You, you, you can't do this. Hick, I'm trying to get, there's a wide open wide receiver. Get it to the guy, watch the crossing route right here and tell me how wide open it is. I'm, this is the read, this is how they draw up the play. Give me the ball, right there. I'm open, yep. I'm open. And that's where you wonder, what are you looking at? We had a side in, Khalif Jackson in the middle. With nobody around him now. The handoff to Dominique, and Dominique just stopped short by Solomon Muhammad. So about third and two coming up. And no one offensive coordinator, Mark Orlando from Grambling, who's been around HBC football for a while. This is two down territory. So he's going to try to muscle you on one play, and if he does it on one play, he's going to do it again. So look for back to back plays from Grambling to look like if they don't get it. Dominique, the man, Dominique! Hey. What a run by Kevin Dominique, a pickup of 16. And it was all designed by formation. They got confused looking over here, and they forgot about the gap right there, the distraction. Look, we focus so hard on the left side, we slice it to the right side. Look for it. Now they're doing the same play, but they're just flipping the formation. They want to get you distracted to the right to go away left. Big bottom holds on to it, and he's wrapped up. He saw a lot of white jerseys in front of him, and he's sacked and brought down. Get rid of the football. When you're down inside the 10-yard line, every yard counts, right? So once you don't get this play right here, you know what you do? You throw it away. You throw the ball away. You don't take sacks inside the 20. In that case, they were inside the 10-yard line and get sacked for a loss of six. That's just plays that you have to learn just to throw the ball away. Credit Chris Hart with that sack. His first of the season. Now second and goal. Hick bottom has a man wide open in the end zone and the score! Reception, and he was all by himself. Got behind the defense. Well, from his slot position, he's in the slot, and you see two white jerseys peeking in the backfield, looking at the receiver. The lack of communication allows for a wide open Thomas in the back end zone. And Congratulations to Jeremy Hickbottom. He gave the fans here something to celebrate with a touchdown strike.
So Dequarius Thomas with his first touchdown of the season for the fifth year senior out of Alexandria, Louisiana. Mendez on to attempt the extra point. And Grambling State goes up 10-3. It was all set up by the block punt. Fantastic job of special teams. When you're playing your home, you got to win the battle special team. They help out the offense, and they finish it off with a touchdown. Found. Found by the hounds. Well, it didn't take long for Dequarius Thomas and the Grambling State Tigers to go up 10-3 after the block punt. Two minutes, 13 seconds, and it ended with a touchdown catch from that man, number 86 in your screen. The Tigers feeling good, but they have grabbed that momentum away. You know, they are led by their defense, but their offense now trying to respond as well. The special teams gave him fantastic field position. We talked about it. We saw how Alcorn clearly outplayed Grambling in that first quarter, but only had a three-point lead to show for it. Well, bad special teams. Grambling picks up a couple first downs, and now they're up by seven. And this one goes into the end zone, and the special teams just played a big part for Grambling State's success the last four games as they've been winners of four and you look at the drive chart for all corn state the only points they got is that field goal on the third drive but outside of that they haven't been able to do much and what did i say about that field goal when they went yeah for it, they should have like gone it. for yeah they had the ball it was fourth and fourth and one on the three yard line i thought they should have gone for it behind waller they took the points which i don't fault them for but that was kind of a defensive win for Grambling. Let's see if Alcorn has fixed the problems they were having with the snap between the quarterback and the center and the timing and location of those shotgun snaps. Milburn back on the field to snap it. Felix Harper avoiding pressure, gets the ball away, finds Nico Duffy. Duffy along the sideline, and Nico Duffy that speedster, he can hurt you. Is Felix Harper a good quarterback or what? Keeps his head up, realizes I'm going down, but knows Duffy's sitting there in the flat. Catchable ball, accurate. That is playing quarterback at a high level. And I was a huge fan of Noah Johnson. Noah Johnson could do it. This kid, Felix Harper, just to see him like in this offense, a little bit more efficient than Noah Johnson was. And Noah Johnson was a winner, but Felix Harper yet to lose a game and just makes play after play. He hands it off to Duffy. But you go back just to the way that he's been able to lead under center. You know, he got a chance to watch Noah Johnson and see what he's done. And really, backups have been the storyline for all Corn State over the years. We saw John Gibbs start a season back in 2014 or 15, and then Lenoris Footman comes in. Then Footman comes in, and he does his thing. He goes down, and it's Noah Johnson. And now Noah Johnson is, is the guy, then it's Felix Harper now. Yep. The defense standing tall up front for Grambling State. Big Anthony Mullins, number eight, transfer from Mississippi State. And he's a transfer that's bought into this program. He's been there for three years playing for Grambling. 6'4", 270-pound defensive end, playing his best football his senior campaign. And fourth and five, and the decision to keep the offense on the field at the 40-yard line, Jay. Yeah, this is when I think you should punt the ball. Now we're seeing the aggressiveness from McNair. Harper stands in, delivers it, and he tried to go for Chris Blair, but a couple of flags on the field, and Felix Harper was slow to get up. This, this is from the secondary. This may be a pass interference or a holding away from where the football was going.
I want to see what this call is. Fourth and five. You're going to reward them with a pass interference for a ball that wasn't even going in that area. So it makes me think it must be holding. Prior to the pass, holding. Defense number one. Ten yards from the previous spot. First down. Now let's see how. I mean, it's going to be on the top right side of your formation. I mean, uh, that, come on, that's, that's not a call. That is a bad call going away from there. And, oh, what a bad call. That was away from the ball. There was no holding there. And Harper tries to go to that same play again. It's not there, but it breathes a new life as it keeps the Braves' offense on the field. Well, Jay, you don't like that ticky-tack call that you didn't see anything didn't see there. It. And then when you tell me number one, and there's no number one on the field, mm -hmm. who you really call it on? You know, they give you the name and number four reasons so coaches can go back and say, oh, talk to that player. There's no number one on the field. Harper gets it out to the flat one. Anthony runs into his own player. There's really nowhere for him to go. Damian Cormaty was able to tackle him. That run pass option there. We're starting to see the speed from Grambling. I thought that all court has speed at the linebacker position. Well, Grambling's got some linebackers that can fly, particularly DeAndre Hogues. And then when they bring in number four, Cormaty down from the box. It's more like a safety play in that nickel position. Pass sideline to sideline. Third and eight. Harper Missed. with the interception into the hands of the Grambling State defender. And Devonir Martin comes up with the INT. Looked like Charles Pringle lost his footing running the curl route. And in doing so, when 82 goes down, in great position is Martin for the interception. More for your thing. That's our thing. Well, this interception is going to show up as an INT by Harper, but the pocket was clean. But when Pringle slips on the curl route, right behind him, the defensive back in great position was Devin Air Martin. Unfortunate call for Alcorn State, but like we talked during the break, Tiff, ball don't lie. No. They got robbed on a holding penalty, we thought. Come right back with an interception. 14th interception of the season for Grambling State. They're excellent at taking the ball away. Time for third in FCS. Now their offense back on the field. And number four on the other side, Kevin Dominique with the carry up the middle. Dominique, he can be explosive. Just a sophomore. Give him a crease, and when you see him wearing number four, it kind of reminds me when they had number five in the backfield, Martez Carter, but Dominique has that same type of explosive ability. They give it to him again. He's a longer back, still physical, but different than Keelan Elder in terms of their stature, but they both get the job done. At one point, wasn't there thunder and lightning in the backfield? <laughs> <laughs> for the Tigers. They would have it. They, they, they keep some runners down here. And this is an offense that's one of the top 15 rushing offenses in the country. Number one in the swag at over 200 yards a game on the ground. The toss out to Dominique, but nowhere to go. It's all Corn State and Solomon Muhammad involved in that tackle. Yeah, Muhammad Quintario Cole, number 32, coming up from his free safety position. You see number one a lot. Dalen Burks, he's been trying to mix it up from that cornerback position. Alcorn defense forces a three and out to minimize the damage of the interception. I love the flow of these games just because, you know, defense, we knew they would do their thing. The offense has responded, but it's really powered by the defense. And Fair catch at the 25-yard line of the Braves after that 40-yard punt. And so we'll get another look at what all Corn State's offense can do on this drive. You know, you go back to that missed 
touchdown pass from Felix Harper, few drives back, and you think, okay. But outside of that, I mean, he's played a good ball game. The offense has done some good things. How can they take it to the next step? They got to slow down Grambling. One thing about this Grambling defense, they're not a large defense. They're fast. I thought the power on the ground from all four should be enough to do the job. And it looked like there was a holding. Yeah. Some interference there on Radarius Anderson, and the flag comes out late. And Joseph McWilliams, the cornerback, number 29, they call him DB pick six. He's got three <laughs> interception returns on the season. Jumping the slant route, got there just a little bit early. Oh, they say Joseph McWilliams. There's no the foul for DPI. The ball was tipped at the line. And that's the rule. If, if the ball is tipped, then you can run right through the defensive, the wide receiver. In that case there, McWilliams got there a little early because he saw the tip. So good job by the officiating crew. We'll see if they target his side again. I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't. He's got six interceptions on the season. Half of them have gone back for a score. Harper looking to that side and dumps it off to Akeem McNair and McNair, excuse me, Nico Duffy. And that was a good job by McWilliams. I watched that matchup, him and Anderson at the top. They tried to set him up with a slow go route, slant and go, thinking he was going to bait. McWilliams didn't fall for it, stayed deep, forced Harper to get rid of the ball to the flat for the short game rather than the deep shot. Braves need a couple here. We see. Grambling State packing the box, but no problem as still on his feet. It's Nico Duffy. Nico Duffy only needed two yards and instead a huge game for the true freshman pickup of 32. Yeah, swerving through the defense. You see him make the first defender miss. It's Krimatai and then gets to the outside. We tell you, we've seen some highlight runs from this freshman before. He continues to impress. And you see the tempo that the Braves are trying to keep here. I got to work on the number four. I hate to butcher. Is it Krematai? Krematai. Krematai. Offense. Okay. No. Apologize to his mom and daddy out there. Krematai. Damien Krematai. It's my fault. But he's been exposed on a couple looks there. That open field tackle, he has to come down to the box and make that play. Braves moving a little too fast. They back up five yards. Duffy on the carry. Duffy trying to juke move and he's brought down by Keenan Fontenot. Fontenot. And this is what I thought they would do. I thought they would use their offensive line to push around the 3-3-5 three, three, look of Grambling. Grambling's big in the middle with Wesley Green, but the end guys are kind of small. Alcorn has a big offensive line, some 300 pounders up there. I thought we'd see them try to play a little bit more smash mouth, and they're starting to do it and having some success in the running game. Still, I still would use the big back in the end. I'm surprised we don't see more Deshaun Waller instead of the smaller back in the freshman Duffy. <laughs> A collision there on the outside as Anderson and McWilliams meet once again. McWilliams jumped the route. He absolutely jumped the route. He saw it before Anderson did. He made a break on the ball, and Anderson should be called for any type of penalty if there is one. And you'll see McWilliams, once this ball is released, he sees it. He's coming to make an interception. That is not pass interference. I thought it should have been a no call. Surprised we saw a flag come out. Talk about Joseph McWilliams, 5'11", 180 pound senior. With interceptions like that, those type of numbers, he's got the speed. When you talk to the coaches, they say he just feels he's that dude. And when you play cornerback, it's all attitude. It's 10% There's no physical. on the play for DPI. Look at McWilliams. He said, I want the offensive pass interference. <laughs> he is having a stellar senior season. You see him at the top of your screen. He sees it. He's breaking on the ball, and he got it right. It almost looked as if Anderson knocked him off to prevent him from getting to the football. 
Duffy stays in, third and 10. Harper rolling to his left, puts the throw on the money, and it's caught by Anderson. So he was looking for him a few times on this drive. This time they connect for 17. Great, Great job of playing catch between Harper and Anderson when they move the pocket a little bit, shorten the field, come up with a huge first down. In the red zone, Harper oh. lets it go. 50-50, and it's Anderson. He brings it in. And he said, you know what? You want to try me, Joseph McWilliams? I got this. They, they hurry to the line of scrimmage to get one-on-one -on -one matchup again. In this case here, throw the ball up high and let your six-foot, five-inch target come down with it. This is just mano a mano jump ball, 50-50 situation. Got away with a little bit of a push. A little push, but he bossed it. He, bossed it. <laughs> <laughs> he got mossed, but that was clearly the bigger man using his size to come down with the touchdown. Seven plays, 75 yards. And all Corn State evens it up at 10 apiece. Felix Harper said, I'm going to the outside. I see my big receiver. Anderson brings it in. Pro on AT&T, America's fastest network for iPhones. More for your thing. That's our thing. Detail with Nick Saban only on ESPN Plus features the Alabama head coach breaking down the way the Crimson Tide defend the run pass option and he looks at why theirs is so dangerous. It's available now, so go to ESPN Plus or get to ESPN Plus. Download the ESPN app or visit ESPNPlus.com. And I'll tell you, Nick Saban and... Uh, the Alabama Crimson Tide in a crucial game today against LSU there in the state of Louisiana. Well, not in the state of Louisiana, but taking on a team from the state of Louisiana. And yeah, everybody in this state was talking about that game. Yeah. I mean, the biggest game of the season in college football. Absolutely. New improved LSU offense behind Joe Burrow, quarterback. What's Saban going to come up with? That's what everybody wants to know. Button along the right sideline, and the flag comes out at the end of it. I almost thought that ball had a chance to go out of bounds. You let it bounce that far in, he would have been better off just taking a chance to see. Brutton just a freshman, so he'll learn, get some film study and learn. Guy kicks it that close in the corner of the two yard line. He's getting coached right now. Illegal block in the back. On, Ramlick keeps the ball. Go back to uh, Nick Saban, and he made a trip down this way to Grambling earlier in the year, invited by Coach Broderick Fobbs, and you think about just what Nick Saban has done at Alabama and LSU, but uh, when you talk about coaches in the world of college football, you have to mention Eddie Robinson. Robinson was what you say, Jay, the man, the myth, the, the, the legend. legend. The standard. All-time winningest coach on any level of football uh, when he retired. And I think Nick Saban was down here getting some ideas for what his library museum is going to look like down here in uh, Tuscaloosa one day. Well, I'll tell you this. Nine championships for Eddie Robinson in his 57 seasons here. But, I mean, you could run off so many numbers the more than 200 men that have competed in the NFL under his tutelage. Just absolutely amazing what he did. I mean, four pro football Hall of Famers, two significant black quarterbacks in Doug Williams and Shaq Harris. I mean, you could almost take a number Point. of this match to Coach Rob. That's the first time out of the half. It'll be a second time out. And, and we can continue to gloat on Coach Robinson and just his impact across, you know, college football. The fact that, you know, he coached at a time where you didn't come into contact with or, or play with your Alabamas back then with Bear Bryant. But he got to know him and he got to hobnob and really rub shoulders with just a little bit of everybody from Branch Rickey to George Steinbrenner. I mean, Eddie Robinson 
was the man, an icon for sure. And one of the things that he did was nobody ever had the name on the back of the jersey. And he used to always say, well, the Packers don't do it, so why are we going to do it? It's all about the G, not about the individual performance. And one of the traditions that they've gone away with is having that name on the back of the jersey. They did it for a little while, special occasions. Almost intercepted by Solomon Muhammad, a terrific defensive player. And I know Coach Rob would be blown away just by the special type of talent that Solomon Muhammad is. Yeah, when you see him, he's got all the tangibles physically you want. 6'1", 235 pounds, can run, can hit, can cover. And what the coaches say, he's getting better with his eyes. Before, he would use his athleticism to run himself out of coverage, out of plays. But now he's learned to slow the game down read then react hick bottom on third and nine and hick bottom still on his feet rolling to his right and delivers the ball the reception was it good to lyndon rash they say yes they call it a catch big play that grambling needed to try and close out this first half of football with the ball and you'll see good patience by hick bottom Well, that catch. was Raylon Richardson. Mm, that's a nice catch. Coming back to your quarterback and scramble drill. Helping out. And the Tigers maintain possession of the football. Good for 17. The stop clock stops the with the first down. Now first and 10 with 121 remaining in the first half. Gets it. Finds his man underneath. It's Richardson again. And Richardson... It's an easy target for him to see the biggest receiver that they have, and he's a guy who can really stretch the field if they need him to, but they are a sure-handed 11-yard catch. Yeah, they need to go back to that play. They're running three wide receivers, clearing them out, and bringing the underneath route from across the formation. He's been open every time they've called that play. Pick bottom, just not on the same page with his receiver. He throws it to the outside. His guy goes to the inside. They, they called the same play. They reversed the formation. And you tell me, is this guy open to me? I want you to see. Hey, weigh it out, number 82. Look at 82. He's coming yep. across formation. Yep. They're going away from the football. That's what frustrates you. You call up this play by design, and kick by them just throws it nowhere. He can be great, and sometimes like plays like that, inconsistent. Pitches it out to Jakari Nichols. And Nichols, who was brought down in the backfield. He was tripped up by Alan Bruce. So Bruce with a big play and an injured Tiger is down. I believe it's the ball carrier, Jakari Nichols. Nichols, the sophomore. See, it's a good job coming off by Alan Bruce. The cornerback comes off and makes the tackle. This looks like possibly Nichols not able to keep his balance. Bangs that knee. Let's hope it's just more of a bruise on that knee than anything major. So the trainers are still giving attention to Nichols. And Jay will step aside really quickly here from Grambling. Surprise, winter bigger surprise. Low prices and free shipping on millions of items at Amazon. During the break, 10 seconds was run off the clock because Grambling State did not call a timeout during that injured player down on the field. Nichols ran back to the sideline and now with time, 35 seconds to go in this one. Jeremy Hickbottom trying to go for it all, has the man, and in and out of the hands of his intended target, Raylan Richardson. You have to make that catch, Raylan Richardson. I think he lost it in the sun, but this was a great pass from Jeremy Hickbottom. He's missed some throws, but he didn't miss this one. And that ball, you can tell he just lost it and allowed it to drift over his outside shoulder when he didn't need to. And what a missed opportunity going into the half. 
would have been had the ball somewhere inside the five yard line. The right play drawn up, but the Tigers unable to execute. They punt it away and a marker comes out. Pringle thought about should he return or not. Couldn't remember if he bear caught it or not. And the hesitation, but we'll see what the call laundry. is. There's yeah. just a lot of laundry on the field. That dirty yellow towel. Seemed like we saw one come out on the snap and then maybe one into the punter. Fouls by both teams. Hey. Illegal formation, offense, more than four men in the backfield. Number 49, those fouls offset will replay fourth down. So they're going to do the re-kick now. If I'm grambling, I'm looking at the clock, 9-7, nine, 9.7 seven, 9 .7 seconds. Alcorn had a lot of penetration on that pump block attempt. I'm taking my time to tell everybody, hey, don't worry about making the tackle so much downfield. We just need to get the punt away and make sure that we've got our punt protection team on the field. Well, this has been a good ball game thus far, Jay, and exactly what we want to see. A lot on the line, all corn state controlling their own destiny, currently undefeated in the SWAC East. Still some room for Grambling State to do some damage, even though with a two and two record, they could make it happen. As penalty markers fly out again, but Grambling State still has a chance to make something happen. In the swack West. False start, 88 kicking team. Five yard, still fourth down. How about this news out of Baltimore, Maryland? Morgan State 22, North Carolina A&T 16. The Aggies wow. lose to Morgan for the second consecutive season. And this one induces another flag. Let's see if the clock can at least get to zero. Maybe <laughs> they're coming untimed down and you take a knee on fourth down rather than punt it. And then Braves ready to oh, run into the locker that. room. They didn't see the penalty marker, which is closer to the Tigers' sideline. And so as Jesse Harris goes over to give the explanation to coach, to says, you know what? It's all right. We'll go into the locker room. And tied in 10 all. Kicking team, more than four men in the backfield. That penalty climb halftime. All right, the clocks are at zeros now in the stadium and on your screen. And we're going in to halftime with this swack battle between Alcorn State and Grambling State tied at 10. How do I look? Perfect. Thanks, Dad. What's his name? Dad. Alexa, hang up. And welcome back to Grambling, Louisiana. Right now is the sound of dynamite take the field down here in Louisiana, but that's not the story right now. Joining me in the booth, the legend, the hero, the man, the myth, my mentor, my hero, my everything. Yeah, he's Doug Woods. Woods. Check in the mail, Jay. Check in the mail. We've had a good time down here, and obviously you mean so much to this institution, but more importantly, HBCUs mean so much to you. Uh, no doubt about it. You know, I know where, where I come from, number one. And uh, I know if it wasn't for Grambling State University, I, I don't know where I would have been. And, and for that, not only Grambling, I look at it from all HBCUs. I look at them the same way, and I feel the same way about them that I do about Grambling State University. You know, being here on the campus and getting to see it, uh, I went to the Eddie Robinson Museum for the first time since it's been open for a little while. And, that one building does a pretty good job of capturing all the history, but what does Eddie Robinson mean to you? There's a lot of history in that building. And even when I walk in there and see the statue as you walk in there, there's so many memories that goes along with what you're looking at. Uh, but it's something that you almost got to be a part of. You know, I, I was fortunate enough with my red shirt year uh, to spend five years with Coach Eddie Robinson. 
So I got to know him pretty good. And, and him and I had a real good relationship. And the thing about Coach Robinson, you know, he was tough on us, uh, but probably one of the biggest, the best motivators you could ever want to see. But, but he did it in a way that you understand where he was coming from. The one thing he always told us that he wanted us to grow up to be good Americans, to understand what it takes to be able to survive in America. And, and, and he gave us all the tools, and that's just by being insightful. I, I just learned something, man. Hold on, man. <laughs> Who was the quarterback that had you red shirt and sit the bench, man? You had the red shirt? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, let, let me tell you a story. When I got here, Jay, it was eight quarterbacks on campus. Okay. So, but but the guy was Terry Brown, who was a high high recruit. Okay. Uh, he was college Fenway quarterback in high school. Okay. That won the state champion. Terry Brown was talented as all I know. And and when the guy Joe Como, who was the starter, uh, when I first got here, uh, and then my freshman redshirt year, Joe Como got hurt. It was Terry Brown time, and we were playing Tennessee State. And the ball wasn't moving. And Coach Rob said, where's that Williams boy? <laughs> and, <laughs> and he called it Williams boy. And I came off the bench and, and threw two TD passes. We ended up winning like 21 to 6. And like you say, the rest is the, re the rest is history. Let's, let's move forward a little bit. I want to ask you two more questions. One, what's the HBCU football landscape like right now? You know, you and I, we talk a lot off record. I said, I don't know if it's black college sometimes. They're playing now a little bit different. But now we're seeing a resurgence in HBCU football and athletics. I think we all know, you know, when, when integration came in, we lost a lot mm -hmm. because the guys had so many opportunities to go other places. But, but I think we got to look at this thing from a parent standpoint is what's the best place for my kid? You know, yeah, I, we with all the big schools and, and have everything economical that you can, 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 can bear. It's good to have my kid there, but if my kid is not playing, I'd rather for my kid to be somewhere where he's going to be comfortable, going to get an opportunity to play and an opportunity to grow. Because whatever you can do, if you can play this game, no matter where you are, find you got so much stuff out there that will find you. Well, i got to ask you that now. Your current job, currently general manager of the Washington Redskins football team up there, and Dwayne Haskins, quarterback to quarterback. Now, come on, man. No, don't, don't, don't give me no political answer. Can he play? Can he throw it? Is that let your me, guy? Let me tell you, it's unfortunate that the, the young guy had to go through all the BS right now from, from the media and the outside. you got to be inside. Number one, if you don't give a guy love, Ain't nothing going to happen. This young guy just getting arms to put around him and getting the love that, that he so much desire and need. And I think right now he's in a good place, in a good spirit. You know, you look at last week, they say, well, he didn't play well. Well, you got to look at the whole picture. It ain't just Dwayne Haskin. But I think right now so many put, people putting so much pressure on him and saying he's not doing that. No, we not doing that. I got we got to come and work together. Yes or no? Can he throw it? Oh, throw it? He can spin it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's quarterback to quarterback. Always good to see you, right, my Jay. friend. Co-founder of the Black College Hall of Fame as well. I think you can call this either Eddie Robinson State University or maybe Doug Williams College. You got your own street name that you got to be a good feeling. We'll come back to Give Me Five when we return to Grambling, Louisiana. Uh, Alexa, hang up. Welcome back here at the half. The world famed marching Tiger Band on the field as we're tied at 10 between all Allcorn State and Grambling State. Jay Walker, Tiffany Green here with you, and it's time for Give Me Five. Yeah. <laughs> this is the Give Me Five show with Jay Walker and Tiffany. Yeah. You gonna have to give me five fingers on it right now. All right, how about this? Getting closer to the postseason, how about the SWAC Offensive Player of the Year candidate? What's going to happen? Ladarius Skelton coming off a career performance a week ago. Southern keeps on winning. He's going underneath the radar. He's a guy that probably the best running quarterback in the conference. He's got a chance. Number four, we saw the Magic City Classic, and I thought it was the Jordan Bentley coming out party. We knew how good Jordan Bentley has been throughout his whole career. But in that classic, he proved that he was the best player on the field, one of the best in the SWAC. But how about his quarterback may knock him off? Number three, Akil Glass. Glass, the leading passer in the conference. AM, one of those teams underneath the radars. If you like stats and everything like that, then that is going to be your guy. We're talking about Akil Glass, the best thrower in the conference. Number two, I think we're seeing him now. 
we're starting to see how good a quarterback Felix Harper is. Felix Harper is taking over for Noah Johnson, and the winning has continued. The numbers have gotten better on a weekly basis. Alcorn State in a position to possibly host the SWAC championship. You have to give credit to that quarterback, and that quarterback for the Braves is Felix Harper. Yeah, we have seen some outstanding play across the conference, but then who in your mind jumps out at number one? I like excitement. I like excitement, and I think the most exciting player in the SWAC is the running back from Prairie View A&M by the name of Dewan Ye Tucker. If you haven't seen him with his joystick moves, he is that home run hitter. He gets it done, can make everybody miss. I call him the Tariq Cohen of the SWAT because he's that special a talent. It'd be hard for me to see somebody knocking off Dewan Ye Tucker for SWAT Offensive Player of the Year. And then when you look at this full list, maybe somebody you left off or who gets there on the bubble. All right, number one receiver in the conference. Texas Southern hasn't had a lot of victories this year, but Donnie Corley, the junior wide receiver, has been lighting it up. He leads the conference in almost every statistical receiving category. He'll get some mention as well, but not quite making my top five. All right, Jay, we'll be back with more. We hope you'll come back with us here to Grambling, Louisiana, as the bands get down. Thanks, hun. Have fun at work. Ten apiece between Alcorn State and Grambling State. It was a slow start, really, for both of these offenses, but Felix Harper came out and made some big throws for his team when he needed them. He's been making good decisions all season long, and that did not stop in this football game here where they were going to need him to make some plays. It's the decision-making of Felix Harper. Goes the right place with the football, doesn't hurt himself, used his legs early on, then got his wide receiver core involved in the action. And Felix Harper playing steady, but steady's not going to get this victory this team. Needs. He's got to play a little bit better if he wants to get the win. You saw that 20-yard reception to Redarius Anderson. On the other side, Jeremy Hickbottom has made some okay decisions. Yeah, Hickbottom, he's been inconsistent. That's been the rap on him. He's made some good decisions, but he's missed some receivers at times. But he's, stunk, he's hung in there, toughed it out, delivered some throws, some catchable balls. He's also had some drops as well. If he can just play a little bit more consistent within the system, then Grambling has an opportunity to put some more points on the scoreboard. You see that touchdown pass to Dequarius Thomas to briefly put the Tigers up. When you compare the two quarterbacks side by side, the staggering number would be the number of yards for Harper as compared to Hickbottom. But Harper has the one blemish on there with an INT. Yeah, wide receiver slipped on the route forcing the turnover, but that turnover didn't cost Alcorn anything. Grambling not able to capitalize. And for that 7 out of 13 for Hickbottom, we saw at least three drops. His numbers could be a lot bigger. He's going to need his wide receiver core to step up and give him some help. We are expecting an exciting second half from Grambling, Louisiana. We hope you'll come back with us. With Prime. Jeremy Hickbottom warming up, getting ready and set for the start of this second half. Grambling will receive the second half kickoff. So the Tigers offensive unit will get to go first here in this third quarter. If you're Grambling, you want to come out and get off to a fast start in the second half. Put Alcorn in the trail position. They had the Braves down by seven. Alcorn able to tie back up, but Grambling needs to figure out a way to start scoring some points. They average 30 points a game. They need to light up the scoreboard here at home. On the return is Donald Johnson, and Johnson just passed the 25-yard line, and that's where Grambling State will start. As we take a look at the first half stats for these two teams, it was a tale of possessions. In the first quarter, it belonged to Alcorn State. In the second quarter, it was more in favor of Grambling State. And what stands out there, Grambling, a team that comes in averaging over 215 yards rushing per game, only 78 yards in the first quarter, been tough to get the ground game going. Also interesting is the fact that they turn you over quite a bit, but their defense has yet to do anything that is hurt 
the Braves to this point. But we're seeing two of the best defenses in the conference. We would question then how would the offense come out and respond. And as we told you in the open, you know, Grambling State has averaged better than 40 points a game over the last four contests. Yeah, but all that changed when you play the corn. <laughs> as they call it, all corn can stop you from scoring. The speed, you're always dodging white jerseys everywhere. They swarm to the football. A shoestring tackle from Solomon Muhammad, and a flag is on the field. Big number 61, Chris Monroe, manning down that nose tackle position. Just very tight windows to run the football when you take on this defense. Illegal block below the waist. I'm sorry for the technical difficulties there. Couldn't hear the rest of the explanation from the referee, Jesse Harris, but it goes against Grambling State, so that will back them up all the way to their own nine-yard line. Now, if you're Jeremy Hickbottom here, you're looking at long situations. Just get rid of the ball quickly. Allow some of your wide receivers to make a play underneath and maybe run for some additional yards if you have to protect the football. He decides to go underneath, and he finds his man. The pass complete to Richardson. Alcorn has struggled defending that same route all afternoon. They clear it out with three verticals. You'll see him come across the formation. Richardson, gear down, make the catch, pick up some more yardage afterwards. And now it's just third and six. Third and seven. They may do the same type of route. Three receivers up top, run the cross route underneath. There he is. They decide to go with it once more. This time it's Devontae Davis, and Davis is stopped short because of Alan Bruce. And, and this is where Hickbottom has to anticipate. Get him that ball quicker. There's a window where if you throw him a nice firm pass, he can make the catch take one cut and accelerate up the field through the crease. But you'll see Hickbottom takes his time. I'll tell you when you need to get it to him. Right now, get it to him. He can make the catch instead of waiting on it, and the defender won't have the opportunity to tee off on him like he did. Alan Bruce, they say, is one of those players who just gives it his 100 at 10 percent, or his 100 percent, how about that? That's good enough. <laughs> on the return is Charles Pringle, the Charles Pringle, who is still on his feet, moving along the sideline. He's only got one man to beat. Well, Charles Pringle got off to a subtle start and it took off. Good job of swerving here. Feels it cleanly. Makes the entry level guys miss. Then finds some daylight with a little wiggle there to the outside. Keep it going. He knows what's at stake. Big play for all Corn State with the Charles Pringle. What a great punt return from Pringle good for 53 yards and automatically now the Braves start out in the red zone you, know, you just get the feeling that Alcorn went to the locker room and they realized what's at stake they came out with a sense of urgency great defense now the special team now let's see if the offense can finish off the deal and this is an area where they have been money all season long Harper gets it out to Akeem McNair but McNair can't hold on to it and slips down I keep saying Akeem McNair, and it's Nico Duffy out of the back. Five and six and are and throwing six, me off. Close. They're close, but the one thing that we've seen all court, I thought when they had some success, was pounding the football. I'm surprised they're not leaning on that running game a little bit more to try and wear down the speedy, grambling defense. And I'd love to know what the status of Deshaun Waller is. We saw him in the first few series, and since then we have not it's been a steady dose of Nico Blair, Nico Duffy. And I will tell you, this linebacker core for Grambling, they've done a good job. I mean, with Hose, because if you're going to go with a three-man defensive line, you need your linebackers to be very active, change up the looks and confusing them. And we've seen McCarthy, we've seen Hogs, Brandon Wiggs, those guys doing a good job playing their positions using their speed against the size of Alcorn. And so third and 10, Anthony in motion. And Harper 
trying to wiggle his way out of the pocket and stand he's dropped for the loss you talked about the great linebackers deandre mccarthy bringing them down and this is just that engine this is that engine from mccarthy he's gonna line up here he's gonna show you a blitz and then watch him follow the quarterback outside the pocket he's coming in there two guys on him i'm not giving up i know that quarterback is somewhere left-handed quarterback can't turn his shoulders becomes vulnerable DeAndre McCarthy with the huge play for the Tigers. And that sends the field goal unit on. 40-yard attempt for Corey McCullough, and McCullough is able to get it. So they settle for three points in the red zone as the Braves on top, 13-10 fastest network for iPhones. More for your thing. That's our thing. Welcome back to ESPN College Football presented by McDonald's. A great look on the yard here at Grambling State University. We also had a chance to tour inside the Eddie G. Robinson Museum earlier today and we'll have you get a in-depth look, a closer look inside later in our broadcast, but I was truly blown away jay with just uh the story of eddie robinson and the legacy and tradition you hear about it and then you're humbled by it when you walk inside when you walk in there it just means something and i always like to say grambling was in the football business before everybody else was in the business of football and I, I joke that it could be called eddie robinson university <laughs> but he's uh meant so much to this part of the state of Louisiana. Darquez Brunton on the return. The freshman still on his feet past the 30-yard line, and that's where Jeremy Hickbottom will try to engineer a drive here for the Tigers to perhaps answer. They, they need to answer because the defense has done the job. Offensively, they've had opportunities, but there hasn't been a sense of urgency from the wide receivers yet. Quarterback Hickbottom, he's, he's just like the advertisement scouting report. He's some really good, and sometimes he'll be really bad. They need to put it together. Right now, there's no loo margin for error, as we talked about in the open, for Grambling. Your season is on the line every week, and they need to come through right now to be a great time to get started. Hickbottom, back to pass, going for it all. He has a man, and it's brought in. The catch is good. By Richardson. And that's the ball that he dropped to end the first half. Well, Richardson comes up big this time. The big play that the Tigers needed. A huge gain on that one. Good for 42. Now they're in Braves territory. The handoff to Kevin Dominique. And Dominique with a strong run on first down. Look, take a look at this bomb from Hickbottom. Knows he's going to get rushed, but still has the accuracy to throw a catchable ball. And this is just outright speed by Richardson. Gets behind the cornerback and the safety. Lays out for it for the big play. And you like it. You talked about, Jay, some of those passes thrown from Jeremy Hickbottom were drops. This one was an all-important catch for Richardson as Jacorian Wren is being helped up and he trots off the field. He's one of those guys, a Juco transfer, can help set the edge for the Braves defense. And so now Hickbottom will continue to try to carve apart the Braves D. And yeah, them losing Wren, that's big. He's their starting defensive end, sets the edge, and Grambling's starting to have some success running the ball to the outside. He had a man flanking out. That's Donald Johnson. Johnson with nowhere to go, and he was quickly met. A great tackle there and pursuit from Jawan Taylor. That is how you make an open field tackle. You had a speedy receiver in Johnson in the open field, and watch number 21, Jawan Taylor. Not fall for the shakes. Lower the shoulder, wrap up, bring down the ball carrier. They're really high on him. The coaches really like Jawan Taylor's work ethic and just what he brings to the field makes guys better. Now second and ten for the Tigers. Four wide receivers. Pick bottom. Rolling to his left. Holds on to it and is met by a few white jerseys in pursuit. 
was Chris Hart along with Solomon Muhammad. There goes Solomon Muhammad again. We know he's a ball hawk. Tracking down the quarterback. And key time right here for Hickbottom. You're only down by three. You're in field goal range. Protect the football first and foremost, but get the most out of your pre-snap reads. Look for a mismatch and attack. Well, he had the ball delivered right there, but better defense from the Braves. And on the breakup was Javen Morrison. So fourth down, and Miguel Mendez is on to attempt the 29-yard field goal. Correction, 34-yard field goal. Snap, hold or good. It's up, and no good. Mendez misses an opportunity. And so after that terrific catch from Richardson, the Tigers not able to get any points. Rivet Modern Stone and Birch Tray and Stone and Beam Faux Fur Throw Blanket. Low prices and free shipping on millions of items at Amazon. Fred McNair and the Alcorn State play Braves holding tight to a three-point lead. Well, you know, Fred McNair is the original Air McNair. His brother, However, Steve, is, is Air to is McNair. Air McNair. And look, the numbers that you see there, 15,000 career yards. Amazing. Compared to Doug Williams, who was also a great here at Grambling State. On the first play of this drive. The reception is good and complete to Radarius Anderson for 24 yards, but you had a chance to speak with Doug Williams at the half. Two terrific quarterbacks. Now let's clarify some things. Okay. Doug Williams played quarterback when they ran a wing T, right? <laughs> so Eddie Robinson was famous for the wing T. So for you to be a wing T quarterback, still get drafted in the first round of the NFL draft. And Steve McNair, I mean, he was spread offense before spread offense. It was drop back run it, do it all, one of the greatest, probably the greatest dual threat Ball college stop. quarterback. Number 11 offense, not set prior to the snap. That's a five-yard penalty, still first down. And, Jay, I remember you did a gimme five list about some of the quarterbacks that were before their time, and Steve yep. McNair was one of them. Steve McNair on that list, Randall Cunningham on that list. and I mean, now you see McNair getting some talk about he might have been the greatest college quarterback of all time, and it would be hard to argue that point. Harper trying to be another great in this Braves offense. Pass complete to Blair. And that's when they start rolling. A good offense will take a, a 10 yard pattern. Just make it look easy. That looked like an easy throw and catch, but a lot of things had to go correct to get to that point. Recognizing the defense, good route by the receivers, nice depth, nice protection. See if all courts can establish some offensive momentum. Harper nice. trying to go at it once more, finds Blair. Down the seat, ball comes out at the end, and it's on the, they say it's fumble. on the ground. So no fumble. The line judge says the it was on the, field, on the ground. Is the runner was down and prior to the all ball. Alcorn's going to try to hurry up and get to the line down. of scrimmage so they can't take a look at this. But I would slow him up if I were Grambler. He at least want to have an opportunity for this to be reviewed. Got the football. Ground might have caused that. I think the ground may have caused it. Devonir yep. Martin on the tackle. Pickup of 26. So it's ruled a catch. We'll see if a review comes down. And no. Braves keep going. Harper making a tough throw as he rolled out to his left, but he had a defender in his face. And they do a good job of rolling Felix Harper to his left. And so often that's you won't get credit for that as a coordinator, but if you have a left-handed thrower, he'd much rather run to his left and have the ability to scramble to his left than it would be if he was going against his right. And we've seen them do a good job of calling to the strengths of Felix Harper. Yeah. 
Harper gets it out, but it was deflected at the line of scrimmage. Rambling State Tigers, Keenan Fontenot was able to get a hand on it. Like a true heavyweight fight, we've seen big plays, but each one of these defenses has managed to do a pretty good job of keeping the opposing offense out of the board when they get down on this side of the field. Rambler trying to see if they can force another field goal attempt. Bend but don't break defense on full display. I keep mentioning the two top defenses in the league. A big third down here. Harper stands in, and it's intercepted! Second interception of the day for the Tigers. Fondo brings it in. And that's Xavier Lodge, excuse me, the redshirt freshman out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Didn't play last week because of concussion, but here comes up with the INT. In, in the center of your screen, reading his eyes, he's looking, he's looking, the ball's coming this way, and sometimes as a safety, you're saying, is he really gonna throw the ball where I think he is? He was looking him down the whole way. Lodge went over and came up with a huge interception on the three yard line, and then added some return yards for good measure. He never looked him away. We saw from that first look. He stared down the receiver the whole time, and Lodge eyed him, got the interception. Now the first down run from Keelan Fel Elder, and a marker is out as Elder had nowhere to go. Holding, 78 offense, 10 yards from the previous spot, first down. But Jay, I can't stop talking about this Grambling State defense because you know, they have been so good this year with taking away the football. It's a point of emphasis for this group, and they have done a terrific job. 15 INTs on the season two here today. But their defense is hopeful wow. that Elder can help get the team out of deep in their own territory and move this football. Yeah, that's a great individual effort there. The Alcorn defense sniffed that play out from the start, but good job of Elder to pick up some positive yardage when it looked like he was going to lose some yards. Look how many white jerseys are attacking this football. It's supposed to be a screen. He's got the one. Here comes Burke's two. Here comes three. Great job of running by Elder. Second and long still. Nick Bottom got to get out of that end zone, and he may have gone down just at the goal line, but there's laundry on the field. Malik Holbert was the one bringing some pressure, bringing him down. Oh. Oh, what a bailout. Hands to the face on the defense, which would be a first down. And I would tell you, Grambling desperately needed this because if they had to punt the ball that quickly as well as their defense has played, that takes a lot out of your football team. And they got a fortunate call there when they really needed one. And so instead of being down on their own goal line, they're out to the 28-yard line. First and 10, fresh set of downs. Hickbottom rolling, finds Elder. Elder being tracked down by Solomon Muhammad. He was the first to get to him. And then some Braves decided to help out. Pick up an eight. And the timing was there. That was good rhythm in the passing game. Play action pass, bootleg, get it to your receiver. The running back out of the backfield in stride. Allow him to pick up some good yardage on first down. And off this time, it's to Brunton and Brunton with a few. Direction lost two on that. Solomon Muhammad, that linebacker extraordinaire from Birmingham, Alabama. I mean, we've seen him. He's just been throwing wood <laughs> all over the football field. He's got a lot of thump. He's the anchor for that defense. 
Third and four. Big bottom back pass has a man, finds Kobe Ross. First time Kobe Ross, we've called his name today, the redshirt junior out of Decatur, Georgia. Pick up of 16 and moving those chains. Nice throw from Hickbottom. Nice blocking up front by the offensive line. Nice executed play for Grambling. Quickly out, finds Elder, and Elder with nowhere to go. Burks was one of the guys that was there, and a flag is out. Probably holding on one of the wide receivers. Maybe Lyndon Rash, number 10. Holding. Oh. Well, I think that's what Jesse Harris was saying. He just had some technical difficulties with the mic, but for you to, you know, come up with some, some big plays, you can't make mistakes like that and shoot yourselves in the foot and go backwards. Yeah, Self-inflicted. That play is just not a good play. You're going to have success on it. And they've tried a couple times to get that screen coming out of the backfield. All court State's just too fast defensively. They're swarming to the ball. Now you have to set up a play to maybe do a pump and go on that type of play. Marquez Brutton, they try to go to the same play. Dalen Burks, a sure tackle there. I just think you have to realize your wide receiver core, they don't block well enough to get those big plays down there. We've seen other teams throw the ball behind the line of scrimmage. You get a big block from your wide receivers, it's a big play. We're yet to see Grambling have the physicality needed to pull off those type of big plays. Second and long. They're running across formation. Ah, oh, they don't. Big bottom with time being chased down. And he's brought down finally by big number 92, Key Wayne Jones, the freshman out of Natchez, Mississippi. Key Wayne Jones, one of those interesting stories for the Braves, number 92 in white, walk on as an old lineman. Then Coach Cedric Thornton, the D coordinator, said, I'm going to use him on the other side. We need some bodies over there. And they feel like he is one that can develop into a solid player for them up front. And a great third down opportunity, but an interception there from Quinterio Cole. Hickbottom had his man too high for him, tipped, and Cole was able to collect it. And this should have been a big play for Grambling State. All corn brought the pressure. When you get blitz, it's man to man coverage. They had a crossing route call coming across the formation. High, hard throw, receiver not able to hold on to it, and Quinterio Cole hits him for the INT. I mean, when they blitz, as a quarterback, you want to have them blitz and know I have it protected when it's man-to-man -man coverage. After the blitz, with personal foul. I'm 19. Grambling. Number 19 has this one. Wow. Whoa. Be 50 yards from the end of the run. First down. That is Hickbottom. The quarterback has been ejected from this game. I saw him get into an altercation with the lineman afterwards. Maybe he was just frustrated with the interception. But there with a better throw, that's an opportunity for a big play in the first down. But on the right side of your screen coming in, you see that there, just not able to hold on to it going to the rash. Cole was right there. You can't lose your cool as a quarterback. When you have an interception, of course the defense is going to talk a lot of trash to you and say some things. You just have to turn around, go to your bench, and say you'll get them the next time. Three-point ball game, and you get thrown out, really doing the service to your team over a selfish play, which is a personal foul. So a huge loss for Grambling State, but a wonderful opportunity if you're a Braves fan. Ray Darius Anderson collects the catch brought down by Joseph McWilliams, and we will be interested to see how that plays out for the remainder of the ball game. But if you're all court state, you're like, I smell blood. Let's let's take this opportunity and let's put up some more points. The RPO from Felix Harper and Harper able 
to get to the first down and more. I've been talking about Grambling not having a sense of urgency blocking with their wide receivers. I want you to watch number 81, Radarius Anderson, on this simple play as you see Hickbottom going to the locker room. played in that anything but you go back to that block chain yeah i mean this is how you block somebody you're gonna see at the top of your screen number 81 turns around now, i'm not getting the football watch him finish the block i got him i got him i got him pushes him out of bounds that's a sense of urgency blocking have we seen grambling wide receivers push anybody out of bounds take them to the ground it's hard it's all hard that's what i'm saying and sometimes you got a question where's that g-man heart where i'm gonna finish you whereas all corn is doing the little things. Whistle dead before the play got started. Illegal snap. Number 77 offense. That's a five yard penalty. Still second down. Well, the Brave centers have had a, a few miscues here today. Joseph Milburn and Mustafa Ibrahim have you know, switched in and out throughout the game. We've seen some tough snaps in there, and an illegal snap called them backed up five yards. Harper has to get the ball away with pressure coming from behind, and he's brought down. Wesley Green, the red shirt, sophomore out of DeSoto, Texas, and he's still down. And, and, and we're nitpicking on the on the centers, but that play doesn't have a chance because of the low snap. Again, you just talked about it. When I've got a sprint call to the right, watch where this ball snap. It's down away from him to his left. He knows he has to go right. That extra step leaves him vulnerable. Big play for Wesley Green. All court struggling at that center position, and that doesn't show up in your stat sheet. Nowhere there to show bad center exchange, but it's big, and we saw how it's showing up in the game. And Wesley Green, the nose tackle. Mean Green, they call him. <laughs> mean Green, sitting at six feet, 300 pounds, is being helped to his feet. Meanwhile, on the sideline, Charles Wright, number three in black, will have to assume the role of quarterback for the Tigers. As we mentioned, Jeremy Hickbottom disqualified from this one. So Wright warming up, and we'll see what the backup can do when it's his turn. Third and 21 on the way for the Braves. Just trying to pick up 10 yards here if you can. Get yourself in better field goal range. Right now, I think they're about at the limit of their kicker. They hand it off to Nico Duffy. Duffy trying to spring himself to the outside, trying to use some of that speed, but caught up by Damian Crumity. Crumity tracked him down from behind. And now you're moving to the left hash for the Braves. And that's a good job. They called that play running to the left. So they would get the ball on the left hash. Maybe the kicker has a little bit more power when he's going from left to right compared to trying to pull it right to left. A 41-yard attempt for Corey McCullough. His long of the season was a 44-yarder. This to extend the lead. It's up. And it's right down the middle. Corey McCullough converts, and all Corn State goes up 16-10 on the road times available sunday through wednesday only on espn plus Anthony holmes is back that's all i care about that's all i'm gonna say jay <laughs> we'll see we'll see <laughs> I mean, but patrick mahomes you know you're around me all the time the most overused term we always hear about oh he's got arm talent patrick mahomes is talented arm <laughs> well jeremy hickbottom is out of this ball game as we mentioned unsportsmanlike penalty kick it out of bounds and they kick it out of bounds on all courts uh, but but now the question is what will this grambling state offense look like without hickbottom and charles wright coming in 
to play quarterback. The five fifth year senior, excuse me, out of Monroe, Louisiana, just down the road. Yes, yeah, six feet, 190 pounds, more of a runner than he is a thrower. So I think you'll see a lot more RPO, and maybe that's what you need in this football game. He can throw the football. We're not saying that. However, when he's in the game, you got to move the pocket a little bit more. He's got his limitations because of his size, but he's a better runner than Hickbottom. Seen action in five games this season, and you see immediately chucking it and running. Solomon Muhammad was there Hello. to hit that hammer. Hello. You want to come in here and be the running quarterback and run up the middle? Big Daryl Henderson, number 51, and Chris Monroe, 61. Hold him up, and Muhammad lays a block on him. But welcome to the game here. Quarterback draw. Watch Muhammad. I'll meet you in the hole, homeboy. Wow. <laughs> And some movement up front. And how often do we see this happen? Different voice back there, different illegal snap count. Snap. Start to see That's the illegal penalty. procedure penalties. Steals second down. Well, this is definitely going to be an adjustment for the Tigers. Wright did get in for a little bit against Texas Southern last weekend. Everybody play. Yeah, everybody. <laughs> well, when you put up 55 points, then yeah. yes, you will get to play. Now we get to see if he's any good. Right is good when he's got the ball in his hands, takes the punishment, but stays on top. And at the 40-yard line, he's brought down by Quinterio Cole. And slow to get up is the Braves' number 58, Malik Holper, their starting defensive end. Watch number 86 in your slot in the middle of your screen right now. He's open. He's open. But running quarterback, I'm taking off. How many times have we seen Grambling have open wide receivers but quarterbacks not find them? I know it's frustrating the offensive coordinator, Mark Orlando, because he's calling the plays, but they're just not executing. Right with time wow. and just misses his man, Donald Johnson. Open. Crossing route was open. That effort just wasn't there. I don't know why Charles Wright didn't step into that throw to see Johnson coming across the formation, which would have been a first down easily. Grambling's in trouble right now. Well, I'll tell you this. You know, they started out the year playing some tough FBS opponents, and they battled through a lot of injuries. So they've had to overcome some tough things. And, and this is one of those in-game adjustments where they have to see what they're made of right here. Is this an important SWAT game? And really nowhere to go for LaCharles Pringle. He tried to outshake some black jerseys, but they brought him down just inside what the 15. A, what a punt. Normally you punt it that far, you outkick your coverage, but that ball was booted. And the flag is down near the 45 of Grambling State. Two forced turnovers today for Grambling's defense, but they haven't been able to produce points off of it. When you think about this group, Everett Todd always talks to this unit. Personal foul, face mask. Number 84, kicking team. That foul will be enforced 15 yards from the previous spot. We'll replay fourth down. And that negates a 75-yard wow. punt. Wow. That was a great punt. And it's negated. You add 15 yards to the end of it. And, of course, a guy kicks a 75, you're going to make him kick it again. <laughs> <laughs> right. we, will, we will take that penalty and make him kick it again. I like the decision to kick it again because when you're up by six, I'm sure Fred McNair's thinking if we kick another field goal, mm -hmm. put them down by nine the way Grandma's offense has struggled, field position game, I like the chances. The graduate out of Gonzalez, California, Miguel Mendez was ready to punt it away, but whistles first. Time out. And a timeout That's a taken time. by Grambling State. All right, so 
A lot going on here. We're watching Alcorn. And Alcorn's been looking great, right? How good are they, Tiffany? Time for my power rankings. Oh, <laughs> I like how you were able to lead into it yourself. Let's see. Yep. How about the Southern University? They've been under the radar. They have a battle taking place right now, but they still control their own destiny after they lose to Alcorn. Number four, South Carolina State. We saw them in person. Their two losses, Florida and Bethune-Cookman, those are really, really close losses there. Number three, we got to talk about this. Yeah. Can't do it right now, but North Carolina A&T. And we'll let you know who's two and one after the kick. Ooh. You want to take my job? Another booming kick, though, from Mendez. Doesn't go as far, but certainly, given where they were, he flipped the field. So, so let's go back to those two and one, yeah, Jay. Well, we know a and going to fall because they lost it. How about this? Go ahead. Are you feeling proud, Miss Rattler? You know, Florida a and &M &M. is still undefeated in the MEAC. And, and, and they've beaten the teams they needed to beat. They've beaten, say, they've beaten all the teams currently below them. That, that's true. That's good. The number one team, we're watching it. They're on the ropes. Alcorn State University is on the ropes. So we'll see if they can hold on to that ranking there. <laughs> I, I think there's going to the be bubble. some I'm going Bowie there. State on the bubble. Okay. Give them some love. Give them some love. Undefeated champions of the CIAA. Coach Damon Wilson and his Bulldogs continue to win. They've probably been the most impressive Division II program I've seen in quite some time. I'm going to put them on the list. All right, those were Jay's power rankings, and this is the end of the third quarter here from this SWAC matchup. All Corn State Braves trying to remain perfect in the conference. They lead going into the final quarter. Thanks, hun. Have fun at work. ESPN College Football is presented by McDonald's. As promised, we would take you inside the Eddie G. Robinson Museum. The Hall of Fame coach was here for 57 years, leading the G-Man to 17 SWAC titles, nine black college football national championships as we get underway here in this fourth quarter. And when you are around campus, Jay, you see Eddie Robinson everywhere. His face, his <laughs> name, they don't let you forget just what he meant. Yeah, the stadium, the practice facility, the museum, the streets. Did a lot in this part of Louisiana, and he's appreciative of it. He and his wife, Doris, as well. And I love that you said before, one wife, one job. One school. One school. <laughs> number one all-time winningest coach. A lot of number ones there with... Eddie Robinson and the tradition that he instilled in the G that you're seeing right there midfield, probably the most recognizable symbol in black college football. First program on television. We take it for granted now to see them on, but it was Eddie Robinson who helped start that trend for black college football. Third and three for Alcorn State and tried to just dart it in there to Radarius Anderson, but broke it up by Joseph McWilliams. Fourth down. Good job by McWilliams on the slant route there. Played some bump and run coverage. Grambling, a school that produced Willie Brown, defensive back, known for his bump and run with the Raiders. Good job by McWilliams. And rest in peace to the Grambling family. Just lost Willie Brown recently. Those four Hall of Famers you mentioned, Jack. And also want to Send our sympathies to the Alcorn State family. Coach Michael Fontroy played at Alcorn. Coach there as well. Lost his battle this week. And this one pops in and out of the hand of Martin. We'll see what the officials say. Alcorn State saying, we got it. And the Braves do have it. But there's a marker out. I think the marker's going to be for pulling somebody off the pile, which is being regulated heavily by the NCAA this year. But and there's another penalty. What is going on? <laughs> Those refs are talking. They throw a ref, <laughs> throw a penalty on another official. That'd be funny. <laughs> Lots to talk about here. I think ultimately it comes down to it was Muffed who recovered. <sighs> Let's take. I'm taking a look. See, does he have room to make the catch? Yes. yes, and then recovered quickly by Keontes Everett, the fifth-year senior, That's wrapping easy. it up. 
Then you start to see the penalty flags fly. So you have the feeling that Alcorn's going to get this football. It's a matter of will they get a little bit closer to the end zone or further away. Now. Kick catch and interference. Wow. Kicking team, number 91. Ball speed. So. Gramley will keep it. I want to take another look at this. Okay. Uh, let's see. You're supposed to give him a little halo. Warning. 91 oh, comes in late. Oh, wow. Oh, no. You could be a couple uh, yards away, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that is a tough one. I... I I don't I don't think I saw what the official saw. I'll say that. Hey, let's keep the game interesting. We don't want to end that. <laughs> you know, I'm the football player in me. We don't end games on special teams, play muff punts. So Grambling, take advantage of it. You're still in the football game because of that tough break call. Let's see if they can find some energy with their quarterback in the game now. The handoff. And Justin Richard. Richard. Seeing his first action of the game and the sophomore with a good run on first down. And you've got to think that even though they haven't executed maybe all the way they would have liked, Broderick Fox says if we execute and hold on to the football, we can win this game. And if they keep it on the ground and maybe get something going there, we can sustain a drive. Yeah, because... Coming in, we thought that Alcorn had more firepower than Grambling. What, why did Grambling have a chance where their defense could be a championship defense? They've slowed down Alcorn. Grambling had to win an ugly game, and this game has gotten ugly. The defenses have been hitting. Offenses have struggled. So if it's an ugly game, all you need is one big play, one fantastic individual effort, and your team can gain the lead. up front as flags fly out. False start, 75 offense. That's the five yard replay second down. Take a look here at the right guard position there. The false start, caught him moving. That's big William Waddell, the six foot two inch, 300 pounder from Tallahassee, Leon High School. I don't know about Tallahassee, Leon. Yeah. Terry Mickens went to Tallahassee, Leon. That's right. And where did he go to college? He went to that Florida Agriculture Mechanical. Oh, okay. Uh, another, another shout out there. Right just going Get back, but not the right way. It. He's got to let it go instead. Holds on to it. A collision, and he's brought down. There was Ooh. Solomon Muhammad <laughs> once more laying the wood, and Charles Wright saying, hello. And this is the difference in the backup and the starter. This is the screen pass designed all the way by the screen. They don't fool anybody. Once you see that, get rid of it. Get Trying to move. He was fortunate that wasn't a 15-yard loss, but watch Muhammad. Oh, he likes hitting people. He likes to come off and be the finisher. Yeah, especially hitting the quarterback. Every linebacker likes that. But credit Theron Bonds for bringing the immediate or initial pressure, rather. And up the middle, and Bonds got to him again, but Wright was able to get the ball away and finds Lyndon Rash. And let's see, what do you do now? Uh, I'm wondering, what do you do if you don't go for it here? You picked up 14 yards there. It's fourth and three. You cross midfield. You're on the ropes, unconventional. I think you go for it in this situation here. Instead, oh, Roderick man. Bob sends out his punting unit. So you still have a little over 11 minutes to go, and, and you can perhaps rely on your defense a little bit more. Again, they're really good in taking the football away, maybe, you know, trying to turn them over. It's been a championship-style defense. It has been good enough, but I don't know if your offense is going to get another shot, you know, to pick I'm up out. a couple first downs. Gremlin. They're going to talk about it. Yeah, talk it over. And, and so when you have – a fresh quarterback like Charles Wright who came in in this third quarter what do you what do you call up what do you draw up from 
Well, it all starts with the pocket protection, so you want to make sure that they pick up any blitz that may, would happen. With all that being said, it looks like Bob is going to stick to it. He's going to continue to keep the punt team on the field. So then why spend a the time out there? The, the personnel, probably they didn't have the right people on the field, wanted to make sure it didn't get blocked. What you can't afford is to have a blocked punt. They, all corns come close on a couple of occasions. Grambling only has one timeout remaining. Mendez trying to pin them deep, getting the fortunate bounce. Can they get to it in time? And they do. Great job. So Mendez, we've seen some really impressive punts. This time he pins the Alcorn State offense on their own two. Get the most from your amazing new iPhone 11 Pro on AT&T, America's fastest network for iPhones. More for your thing. That's our thing. Ten fifty-five remaining in this ball game. Jay Walker, Tiffany Green with you from Grambling State as the Tigers trailing by six. Fourth quarter scoring. You see the last four games. Grambling's defense has been quite stingy. Opponents have only put up 14 against them, and they have the Braves pinned deep. Can Anthony Mullins, big number eight up front, help bring some pressure? And perhaps keep the Braves off the board. Nico Duffy finds some daylight. Nico Duffy with a big run. And that's one way to give yourself some breathing room. Huge play. That just negated the decision to punt the football. It was great special teams. Pin them on the two-yard line. But Duffy, the speed strata Tampa, finds a crease. Big run for all Corn State. 23-yard pickup for the running back. They go at it again, keeping it on the ground. And with Duffy, this time he's wrapped up by DeAndre McCarthy. McCarthy, who was held out the first four weeks with an injury, has been an impact player from his linebacker position today and all season long for the Tigers. Imagine that. He's been back-to-back -back SWAT defensive player of the week. They feel like had he been... Able to play those first four games, they wouldn't have gotten off to an 0-4 start. He's proven them right on the field. Harper putting it in the air to Chris Blair, and Blair bobbled it and couldn't control it. Devonair Martin on the coverage. They are playing old-school smack football. Man-to-man -man coverage, blitzing the quarterback, make a play. Every offense has tried everything they could in this football game just to get it going, but it's just not that type of party. And if the Braves aren't careful, they'll hand the ball right back over to Grambling State. Now third and 12 for the visitors. <laughs> Duffy going for the Charles Pringle, and Pringle couldn't come up with it. Right on him was Cromity. Cromarty made some big plays later in this game after a couple defensive miscues to start. That was good defense on the man-to-man -man coverage. They're putting a lot of pressure on their secondary. When you play that much man-to-man -man coverage as a quarterback, you've got to make them pay or else they're going to start making you pay. So all Corn State will put it away after they scored 13 straight points since Grambling had that 10-3 lead. And now the Tigers find themselves with a good chance here. But we go back to that last punt with that kick, kick catch interference there yeah, with yeah, Devin and Martin. And, and the fair catch is right there. Once he does a fair catch, he has every opportunity to catch this ball until it touches the ground, the ground. So what they're saying is, yes, he muffed it. He was going to make the catch again, but the ball never touched the ground. Alcorn can't get that ball until it touches the ground. That's why they had to call the kick coverage interference. The officials got it right. You may not like the rule, the way it's enforced, because I thought, well, if the ball's coming right at me, <laughs> I have right. to move out the way. Instinctually, you're going to try to get yeah. to it. Right. Darts it to Richardson. Solid throw on first down. Pick up of about nine. 
now what would you like to do if, if you pick up that much yards on first down, you waste it down. You go for a deep ball. I'm going for a one-on-one -on -one jump ball 50-50 situation, see if we can come up with a big play. Instead, they elect to hand it off, and Justin Richard was pushed in the wrong direction as Richard lost one on that one. Now third and two. And that was just a waste play right there. Ramblin' State realizing all courts are tough to run against. They want to waste it down, so let's see if it paid off and they can convert here on third down. Blown. Almost a delay of game. Did they call a timeout before that or? Ball start. start. 60 offense. That's five yard. Still third down. Left guard, David Moore. Out of Little Rock, Arkansas. So instead of third and short, you know, out third and seven. And how does that change your play calling again with your backup quarterback? Completely. Change the third and two, you still have the option to run the football. Third and seven, obvious pass situation. The only type of run you would have would be from your quarterback possibly running it. But now they got to win some one on one matchups. Right, goes once more to the outside in Richardson. And they say it's an incomplete pass. And that brings up fourth down. It's time to bring out the punt team again. On the out route, couldn't connect. They gave him plenty of cushion on the outside, but Braylon Richardson not able to catch that ball inbound. Forces the punt. I'm just struggling watching this Grambling offense struggle like this. I mean, this is the home of Doug Williams, James Harris, Bruce Eugene, Kendrick Nord. Offense was always a factor here and they shank the punt and things are going downhill for the Tigers quickly. Well, special teams didn't necessarily work out so much in that punt. Alcorn State has the ball when we come back. Thanks, hun. Have fun at work. Stay ready on the road here in Grambling, Louisiana. The sounds of dynamite have been dueling back and forth with the Marching Tiger Band. This has been a fun one for sure, Jay. And still a whole lot of football left to be played as the great defensive effort there by Jeremy Carter. And maybe that's what Graham is going to have to do if they want to win this football game. Maybe the defense, which has had the ability to put points on the board for the offense, can come up with a big play. You'll see Jeremy Carter not fooled by the little waggle pass coming out. Gets a hand on the football and bats it away. Alcorn State with a six-point lead. Looking to add a little extra cushion. Nico Duffy, who has run the ball well here today, up ahead just near midfield, brought down by Jeremy Carter, who was once more in on that tackle. Finally starting to see Everett Todd get a little bit anxious, the defensive coordinator from Grambling, bringing all three linebackers close to the line of scrimmage, doing some run blitz, trying to create some havoc, trying to get a tackle for a loss. In the middle of your screen, the guy to watch is, is this guy right here. If you take a look at Jeremy Carter, 34, he's that weak side linebacker. They like to blitz him. He gets closer to the line of scrimmage. They got him in there to bring pressure. The third and seven, and going to the outside, Ray Darius Anderson, and an incomplete yeah. pass. And look, that was a quick three and out for all corn state. So you don't give your defense much of a breather at all after those three quick plays. They're going at it. They're battling. Good job by the Grambling defense. When you've got two defenses, one and two in the conference for a reason, 
Right now, offenses are struggling. Here. I always tease the folks in the SWAC. I say, you know, in the SWAC, sometimes defense is optional. <laughs> well, today it's not optional. The offense has been optional. Catches this one, so only 41 seconds ticked off the clock for that all corn state drive or, excuse me, possession. But what's it going to be for Grambling State? I mean, I think that's the question that we keep answering. We knew this would be a defensive battle between the two, as you mentioned, Jay, but how do you kickstart this offense? Grambling hasn't scored any points since the seven minute mark remaining in the second quarter. Yeah, the defenses have been that good, but these are two offenses that each averaged over 30 points a game. I don't think anybody saw this coming. Grambling has to rely on their backup quarterback because Hick Bobby the starter was ejected. They just have to see what stick, what type of play they can make. Right going forward, tries to throw it down the middle, and it's yeah. intercepted. Torrance Wilson comes up with it. His second INT of the season. How did he come away with that interception? I don't know. It looked like Devontae Davis was going to make the catch, but he throws it up for grabs. This is a 50-50 ball. You tell your receiver, I need you to come down with it. Oh, he swiped it away. It went through the hands of Davis and corralled by Wilson right there, just yep, through the hands. Through the hands, yep. And that's why you tell your receiver. The ruling on the field is innocent. That play is on the further review. That's why you teach your wide receiver, don't let the ball come to you. You go up and grab it at its highest point. He let it come to him and look like Terrence Wilson swiped it away on his way to the ground. Well, the senior out of Lakeland, Cal oh, excuse me, Lakeland, Florida, could have come up with a big one for this Braves defense. They're taking a review. Let's After see further review, around. That's the ruling on the field of an interception is confirmed. It'll be all points ball, first and ten. That is a great play by Torrance Wilson. And now here's what you have to think. It was just like a punt. Yeah. It was a 40-yard throw down the field, just like a punt. Can your defense make another stop? I'd be shocked if Alcorn didn't try to force the run here a little bit. Nico Duffy has been the workhorse today. We mentioned Deshaun Waller, who was the SWAT newcomer of the year last year. He got in for a couple of series, and since then we haven't seen him. So and this is his style of game. Yeah. Physical bruising. You need the bigger back in the backfield to finish off some runs, punish some would be tacklers, but all their services have been limited. So Duffy has been the heavy duty guy today. Is all corn state taking their time in between each snap. Nico Duffy says, you know what? I'm gonna move the chains and sustain a drive and try to keep this going as he's brought down by Xavier Lodge. They showed their hand too much. Grambling coming with a run blitz. Linebackers got up to the line of scrimmage and stopped. Anytime you have a linebacker that's not able to use his speed and mobility and the defensive lineman or offensive lineman can size him up, it's going to be a tough day at the office for the linebacker. They need to delay that run blitz. Don't get to the line of scrimmage so fast before you shoot your gap responsibility. And Duffy just trying to be patient, taking his time. And, and, and look, Jay, I think the question is, you know, who would be the team to slow up or trip up Alcorn State? And to this point, so far in the SWAC, Prairie View A&M, Mississippi Valley State, Alabama State, along with Southern, have all come up short. And if they knock off Grambling, you can basically assure that the reservation is going to be rocking. What is that, December 6th for the SWAC championship? Mm -hmm. They get a victory here, and Jackson State took a loss today as well. FYI, all you folks watching from the state of Mississippi, Jackson State lost to Alabama A&M. Yeah. 
The Braves are a virtual shoe-in. Flag flies out, and, and as we take a look at just some of the games around the wow. MAC and SWAC, yeah. This one here is big. That one's big because... This one here is big. Uh, we don't care about that. <laughs> oh, of course you would <laughs> say that. This is a that. big one there, too. You got some big games there. Yeah. But how about North Carolina A&T taking the loss as well as Bethune-Cookman? Mm -hmm. So that means that South Carolina State shoots up to the top Tied. of the MEAC. Now, of course, Florida A&M is undefeated in conference play, but they will not be able to compete in postseason. Pinnacle post shift. Offense. Two men moving and not reset. That's five. five pick. Replay second down. So in the MEAC, you've got South Carolina State with two losses in conference. You've got Bethune-Cookman now with two losses in conference. You've got North Carolina A&T with two losses in conference. Next week, we go to Bethune-Cookman at North Carolina A&T, which is now an elimination game. Yes. That'll be a third loss for them. And all Buddy Pugh and the Bulldogs. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got the tiebreak situation, which are crazy. But oh, South Carolina State has a tiebreak over Bethune-Cookman. Right. A&T has a tiebreak over South Carolina State. Oh. There's a <laughs> lot that can shake out between now and then, but this is this is when you start to thin, right? You start to thin and see, you know, who are the last team's standings standing going into the last couple weekends. And folks talking about the SWAC, their SWAC mm -hmm. football, Grambling needs this victory. They've got two losses in conference already. They're chasing Southern which they always are. Grambling wins this game. They can find a way. Then that Bayou Classic becomes special. If Grambling loses, then the Bayou doesn't have the same luster that it normally does. Third and 12. Can the Tigers' defense come up with a stop? Chris Blair yeah. was held up all the way by Devonair Martin. And you see the marker coming out. And this one is going against the Tigers. And you hate to see that, though, Jay, because it's third, it's third and 11. Yeah, no, I, I like that. I, I like the play call. It's third and 11. You're probably not going to get it. Throw the ball. Try and give your receiver a 50-50 chance or get a pass on the fence. I don't like the fact that the Grambling defensive back wasn't smart enough to realize you can't play him that long when the ball's in the air. But I'm saying you hate to see that if you're a Tiger fan, given the fact that you had an opportunity to come up with a stop. And, again, you talked about. There's no foul on the. Whoa. 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 Okay. They're going to call that not catchable. <laughs> Whoa. I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat my words here. Let's take with a look. That, uh, pass the on the sideline, he's wrestling him. You can ride him, but he's pushing him out of bounds that ball was catchable yeah because it, it stayed in bounds you see that uh, right here yeah. all that blair had to do was come over oh wow. uh, that's a catchable ball I, i'm sorry if he's not bumping him and riding him like that i think that's a catchable ball there grambling has hope again well the tigers are fortunate with the no call there and they almost got to the punter and this one bounces into the end zone for the touchback. So this should be an entertaining final three minutes and 51 seconds from Grambling, Louisiana. Last year in Lorman, between these two crowd of over 10,000, Alcorn led 23-13 at the half. Then Jeremy Hickbottom with a 24-yard touchdown run in the third. This would tie the game at 23-all. Then in the final minute, that's when it came down to this. Noah Johnson to Chris Blair with 12 seconds remaining, and Alcorn State got their first win over Grambling State at home since 1997. And now we find ourselves here with these standings shaking out like this, Alcorn State trying to remain perfect in the SWAT. Grambling State holding on to an opportunity of dear life to stay alive in the SWAT West. Charles Wright, the backup quarterback, trying to move this team down the field, engineer a drive, and perhaps tie the ball game or take the lead. It's time to get Charles Wright on the perimeter. 
you're asking your backup quarterback to come in there and become a pocket passer with a lot of pressure, I'd move the pocket, see if he can make a play outside of it. Right, sees his receiver go down, Lyndon Rash, and a oh, late flag wow. comes out <laughs> from the field judge. Ooh. It's like the back judge looked at the field judge to the umpire. What did you all see? And, you know, here's the thing to get you. So they picked up a flag earlier because they said for Alcorn it was an uncatchable pass. Right. This ball was a lot more uncatchable <laughs> than the ball that we just picked up. I'd be shocked if they don't pick up this flag. If, if they don't, but we've seen crazier things happen here. And they're, they're trying to talk it out. Let's see what well, they here, say. There's no foul on the okay. flag. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. You can't do one and then do the other one. <laughs> Roderick Pops, not happy. I mean, you know, there's, the some, there's some contact there, but. The ball was up in the air. I mean, look where that ball was, yeah. 10, 15 yards up. But my thing is, if they would have kept both of them, I would have said, okay. But if you get rid of one, I think the right thing is you have to pick up the other one as well. So now an important third and eight. You know this is two down territory. White trying to get out in space. Right, hold the ball. What a great block. Wow, Keelan Elder. How about an attaboy there for that block? Oh, this may be the block that keeps their season going. Solomon Muhammad, he sees the quarterback in his tracks. He's going to come up, make a tackle. No, you're not. Elder putting his body on the line to sacrifice to spring his quarterback for the first down run. 18-yard pickup now at midfield for the Tigers. Right, finds Johnson. Johnson with a nice screen. And again, Another first down for the Tigers. Pickup of 11. Great job by the right side of the line. McLeod and Waddell, number 61 and 75 on the wide receiver screen. And they've got Alcorn on the ropes, and the SWAT East champions are going to get a T.O., baby. They need some oxygen. This place is ramping up. It's the drive started with the Braves chop. And then after a couple of first downs, now the Tigers like, wait a minute, we're gonna take over the sounds in here. What they say, hold that Tigers, what they like to play down here in Ramblin' Land. These folks here are showing the pride of what it means to be part of the Graham fam. We talked about the great finish last year. Hold on, folks, because another one could be on the way. 2.45 remaining. First and 10 for Grambling State. Charles Wright calls his own number. Good, Good pick up on first down. Good job. Picked up positive yards in the running game. Second and manageable. Now let's see if they take that deep shot here. You have the yardage you needed on first down. The clock is stopped with an injured Brave on the field. That's Shakori and Ram. We saw Ring go down earlier, but let's look at the timeout situation for both teams. Two timeouts for Alcorn State, Grambling State with only one remaining. As you said earlier in the drive, it's four down territory. It's do or die. So the one timeout, that shouldn't become a factor as long as Grambling has the ball. If they don't pick up a first down, then that'll pretty much be ball game. But two minutes in a college situation when you can get first downs when the clock stops after you get a first down, it's an eternity. It's an eternity. So timeout's not really a factor, but the factor right now is how can Coach Fobbs, Tigers, figure out a way to get the ball in the end zone to get the lead and try to hold on for a home victory here at the Rob. Start calling it the Rob. The Rob. <laughs> What I think is so interesting, you talk about they, they start out the season 0-4, like we mentioned, and then there's been a resurgence. Resurgence. Broderick Fobbs has seen his group 
turn things around in spite of injuries, in spite of his starting quarterback being disqualified in the third quarter. Now Charles Wright has a chance to architect this drive. Keelan Elder on the carry. That's been the look they've done. The bunch formation to the right, they're going to run it to the left. And when they go bunch left, they end up running it right across the formation. But let's see if they don't go with that crossing route they've had success running. Bringing somebody all the way across the formation, hitting the crossing route or the drive route as we used to call it. Got to pick up three. They pass it out to the outside. And diving for it. Great effort by Elder. We'll see where they mark it. That was a football play. That was great defense. They blew up the would-be blockers, but a fantastic effort by Elder. Leans forward to give him the first down. He extended. Take a look. Watch the defensive backs from... Oh, come on. blow him up. That's what you do. Blow him up. Recognize. I think he got just <laughs> enough to get the first down. Way to stretch that ball out. Going for it. He's got a man in the end zone. Touchdown, Grambling State. The safety in the cornerback, perfectly placed ball to Kobe Ross. The ghost of Eddie Robinson strikes again as the G-men fight and claw and tie up this football game. However, something to talk about, the celebration penalty. And the extra point is no good! And now the all corn sideline has got to jump. How do you miss the extra point? This is the touchdown. The perfectly thrown ball in the crease to Ross. Ties the football game up. Bramlin going up by one. The snap and hold look to be good. Mendez, who has done a great job on his kicking duties all day long, and the most important extra point, and can't boot it through. Opportunity to give your team the lead with a minute and seven goes by the wayside now. I want to see. The official said there was an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, like there was a celebration type. So after Kobe Ross caught it in the back of the end zone, all of his teammates came over to pile on him. And so now that moves them back 15 yards. So now this is important. So that's how we got here. The key is now the game is tied. They have to kick off from the 20-yard line instead of the 35-yard line. All Corn State with any type of decent return is going to get the ball back around midfield. All they need is a couple yards to get in field goal range. That could turn out to be a costly penalty on the celebration taking off the helmet. I'm setting up a kickoff return here. You get 30 yard return here. What a kick. What a kick. I'm telling you. What a comeback from Mendez. On the return, Morrison, Morrison is still on his feet. David Morrison with a great return near midfield. And that's where the Braves will get the ball with less than a minute to go. Well, I said two minutes to go with a timeout is plenty. Well, with a minute to go and two timeouts, that's an eternity. Great return by Morrison, realizing what was at stake. Allcorn's got the ball right around the midfield mark. They don't need much. Couple 
first downs, and they just want to set up a game-winning field goal attempt here if they can. This is good football on a Saturday evening. Felix Harper with time and incomplete on the outside to Chris Blair. That's the matchup they've had. Devonair Martin going against Chris Blair. Blair the senior, Martin the sophomore trying to pick on him a little bit. Just off the mark with that throw. Watch out for number 81 with Darius Anderson in this situation. They like to get him one-on-one. -on -one. Harper goes to the outside, looks for Juan Anthony. Anthony steps out of bounds after the eight-yard completion. Great play call. They keep giving it to you. You don't have to hit them over the top. They just need positive yardage on these plays. And keep in mind, you can run the football here if it's open because if you get a first down, the clock will stop. You don't have to call a timeout. Nico Duffy lined up in the backfield with Harper. Duffy tries to sneak through. See, clock stops. See, right now it stops. So get up there, you decide whether or not you're going to spike it or time out now. Good job of getting the ball to Duffy, realizing we need two. He picks up more than that when the Braves are on the prowl. Clock starts again. Harper looking. This is the football that's on the ground. Call timeout. You're all corn. Call timeout. Harper, very fortunate to hold on to the football. DeAndre Hoax was right there as Harper was holding it like a too gently, too gingerly right there. <laughs> Wrong time to get jiggy with it, huh? Tries to step up Hoax. Great job with a strip sack for Felix Harper. Quick enough. To pounce right back on and continue to give possession of the football to all corn state. So in this situation, second and 13, 29 seconds to go. You only have one timeout remaining. What calls are you getting in this huddle so that they can be ready? I'm to get my, my long passing game out there. They're second down. You got to call some curl routes and out routes. They continue to do it. Wouldn't be surprised if they took one deep shot to the end zone, but understand the situation. If you pick up 10 yards, get up there and clock the football right away. But ultimately, it's what range do you feel comfortable with your kicker, and I'm thinking they've got to get the ball to about the 27-yard line. Harper with the quick out. On the sideline, catches made. They are playing smart right now. They're, they're just picking. They're not getting overly aggressive. They're just, they, they give us the six-yard pass pattern, we'll take it. If we get another one of those, maybe a first down, but we'll be in field goal range. Grambling, get your defensive backs up. They've got them too far away. They're giving them a seven, eight-yard cushion, which Alcorn recognizes, and they're taking these easy throws. Look at this. Look at the defensive backs. That's too much cushion. They're taking it from him. Harper going outside again, and the pass complete to Nico Duffy. Duffy stops the clock just near the 30-yard line. So as it stands now, this would be a 47-yard field goal attempt for Corey McCullough. His long of the season is from 44 yards. He made one from 41 today too, Jay. Yep. Well, that's why I said they needed those three more yards to get to the 27 to get there in their comfort level. But with 19 seconds, why not give your kicker a chance to win it for you here on the road? graham has got a timeout. Surprised they're not going to use it. The kick is up. And it's no good. No good. Fourteen point three seconds remaining as Alcorn State not able to finish this off in regulation. I'm telling you, Eddie Robinson's favorite son, Doug Williams, is in the building, the ghost of Eddie Rob. This ball's supposed to turn in. It stays straight. 
Grambling's football season is still alive. Now you better watch out because the court is ready. And don't you be conjuring up all that stuff? Because let me tell you, we're in Louisiana now. Okay? That's all I'm going to say. That's all you got to say. <laughs> I mean, this game should have been over for Grambling a couple times over. They're still in it. They're still fighting. And they're showing you what it takes to be a champion. Fighting hard with the defending SWAT champion for the past years. And, Jay, I'm not trying to, to put the spotlight on us, but what is it about SWAT games when we've called them overtime. as of late? We just keep getting overtime games. Uh, just three consecutive overtime four. we have for the, in the SWAT. Four. Four consecutive I SWAT. I it was Mississippi Valley State Jackson. Jackson. Yeah. Prairie View A&M Jackson oh, State. about that one. Magic, Magic City, City Classic. And, and now, now this one. do it again. Let's just call it SWAT Overtime. Come up with our own show. <laughs> SWAT Overtime. <laughs> I love it. I'll just give our viewers a quick reminder of the overtime rules. The coin toss will decide who will go on offense and defense first, and then which end of the field the other team selects, which team can go for one. You'll start on the 25-yard line. And this overtime is going to be so unique because both these defenses are so good. Yeah. You know, normally you say, okay, let the other offense get it first, put the defense out there, but I think the coin toss is so important. So important because both of these defenses can stop their team from kicking a field goal if necessary. When you're in these positions, do you prefer to get the ball first or respond no, and no. have it second? No, I want a second. Okay. Because there's really no reward. If you get it first and you score right away, not like the NFL, the other team gets to get the ball back too. And yeah, they can go they, for the touchdown. They, they, they get it back, but what I'm saying is, does it give you a boost? No. Does it give your defense an extra? I, I want to know what I need because basically if you get the ball first and you miss a field goal, then – all the other team has to do is kick a field goal to win. So that's why you always say, if you win the toss, put the pressure on their offense first. Allcorn State perfect in the Swag East. Coming in at 6-2 and two overall on the season for Broderick Fobbs and the Grambling State Tigers on the other sideline. They started out the year 0-4, but still have life in the SWAC West. Winners of their last four. This is when a guy like Fred McNair, his demeanor takes over. He's like this whether they're up by 30, whether they're in a, they're in a tough football game like they are right now. As a player, you just go out there and do your job. play defense I'm sure all right 16 all we'll be back with overtime in just a bit take my eyes off you. free one day delivery video music and more with prime Up all game long. You go back to that fourth quarter. They hadn't scored since the second quarter, but Grambling stayed able to tie up the ball game and then the missed extra point, which would have done it, which would have completed the game. Instead, it sets up Javen Morrison on this great kickoff return. However, Corey McCullough couldn't finish off the game for all Corn State. So that's how we find our way in the OT period. Alcorn State won the toss, and Grambling State gets the ball first in overtime. Keelan Elder on the carry. Come on, you know who made that tackle. That's Solomon uh, Muhammad. Solomon <laughs> Muhammad. I feel like we need to continue to come up with nicknames for you know some of these dynamic players that we've seen in the swag. 
I mean, what, what, what's yours for Solomon Muhammad? I'm putting you on the spot. King Solomon. Ooh. Aha. The king well of played. defense yeah. there. Yeah. The king of defense. Came out quick with that one. Back him up three yards. On second down. Wright trying to go for it into the end zone and not able to haul this one in as Devontae Davis was the intended target. Again, one of those balls just go up and get, but this time Brave secondary was moved over. Yeah, they need to get some positive yards. Right now, this field goal range is very iffy mm -hmm. for a Grambling State right now. Would not be surprised to see Alcorn State maybe try to dial up something on the blitz, try and move them a little bit further back. They seem to be, they seem to be content playing a soft zone, keeping everything in front and making a tackle. Surprised they're not trying to take them out of field goal range. Right, trying to take off with it. Still on his feet, wiggles out, tries to go to the other side. Kick his eyes down the field. He's got a man under the back of the end zone. And Dalen Burks with a huge pass breakup. Wow. Richardson was standing right at the back of the end zone. Way to keep your eyes down the field, but even better defense. The ball just hung in the air too long, and Burks recovered in the nick of time to prevent what would have been a sure touchdown. And we say it over and over again, you don't let the ball get close to you. Go get it at its highest point. Don't allow the defense to get back into play. This one from 45 yards out. And it's up. And it's good. Miguel Mendez makes the field goal and puts Grambling State up 19-16. Look at him, I'm money. I missed an extra point, so what? Take this long field goal when everybody in the stadium thought he was gonna miss it, but he's telling you, ice in the veins. But now he's feeling himself. Now he's feeling himself because he's put his team on top for the time being. And to be a good kicker, you're only as good as your last kick. And the kick that's in front of you, all can be forgotten. He did his job when he needed it just now. And now it's all Corn State's opportunity to try and win the football game or at least tie it. Felix Harper, and it's broken up quickly and read well by Devonier Martin. That, that young man's grown up tonight. He's played a whale of a football game. Very active, impressed with his tackling ability, and now we're starting to see the young sophomore break on the football and win that matchup versus Chris Blair. Watch the slant go. If they see you biting on those slant routes, they like to do a pump and go. Have to have discipline. And just miss thrown from Felix Harper. And third and ten now for the Braves. And a few times we've seen Felix Harper in his career as a starter there at all point. He looks a little dazed. I think he's not used to the look he's seeing from Grambling right now. Taking away his first read and secondary read hasn't been there. I look for him to go at the top of the screen, though. Take a couple positive yards with a quick pass. Converging in, but somehow he's able to stay on his feet, finds a man, and Nico wow. Duffy was able to pick up the first down. Oh, my goodness. They had him. They had him bottled up. Oh, if they come up with the sack, you're out of field goal range. That's ball game if you get tackled right there. Instead, finds Duffy sneaking out of the backfield, and they pick up the first down. And now they're thinking touchdown instead of field goal. 13 yards after that scramble and toss out from Harper. They give it to Duffy. Duffy won't go down on first attempt. And he's brought down from behind by Wesley Green. Can the Grambling defense do it one more time? 
force Alcorn to settle for another field goal attempt instead of giving up a touchdown. Alcorn's been down here before many times in this game today. They have not produced in red zone offense. We're going to see if they can make a change. And they came in as one of the best in FCS in putting up points in the red zone. Harper finds his man and incomplete to Chris Blair. Another third down. They're trying everything. They're moving the pocket. They've tried double moves. They've tried sprints, quick outs, slants. This Grambling defense just won't go away. There's so much underneath help from the linebacking core. With the athleticism showing up. Also, be careful of number 29, Joseph McWilliams, defensive back from Grambling in these situations. He's at the bottom of your screen, matched up against number 81. He likes to jump routes. Need your best play here. And it's whistled. And a flag is out. False start. Offense. So a critical penalty here. Pushing them back five. They still can get to the two yard line to pick up a first down. I don't know if, if you, necessary. You, you want to go for the end zone here. No, I don't think you go for the end zone here. No. The Grambling knows I think you go to ensure your field goal kicker that you're going to have an attempt to do it because you go for the end zone interception. That's that's ball game. I think that was a big penalty they had there. Harper going for it, half the man. He had him, just missed him. Yeah, they, they brought the tight end in the backfield to act like a fullback, all indications where they were going to run it. They tried to sneak a slant there. The route was open. Rambling, dodge one there. McCullough on to attempt what would be a 33 yarder. It's up. And it's no good. Rambling State pulls up. The ghost of Eddie Robinson does it again. Grambling just won't go away. Southern University, the Bayou going to mean something again. The overtime victory for Grambling State, who remains alive in the SWAC West. And yes, they will look to November 30th. McCullough was 6 of 10 on the season from field goals and yanks it to the left. And afterward, Jay, pandemonium here at Eddie G. Robinson Memorial Stadium. What a football game. The Tigers and Alcorn State, their first loss in the SWAT. Meanwhile, Grambling State is eyeing down Southern. <laughs> They're coming for the Jaguars. Just put them on notice in that room. <laughs> they are waiting for. And Alcorn with the loss still holds the tiebreak scenarios against every one of those teams you see there that had two losses, except Jackson State, who they played last game of the year. What a year it is for SWAT football. Five straight wins for a Grambling State team who started off the season 0-4. Congrats to Broderick Fobbs and the Grambling State Tigers for the overtime victory and upset over the SWAC champion Alcorn State Braves. 19-16, your final score.
for Jay Walker and our entire crew. I'm Tiffany Green saying it's been a pleasure so long.